There's two types of hemp. What? Bad trees will produce bad fruits. The more sin you commit, you can't see them all. That is all the strategy is about. You cannot end up in the wrong place. Wherever you end up, you're supposed to be there. You are judged now. God is going to sentence you and Jesus is going to damn your soul. It's the more you weighed down by the sheer burden of your sinfulness. Today's discussion is about hell. There's two things to consider. One, there's two types of hell. And two, what would qualify someone to go there? Before I begin, I would like to give you a little bit of background. If you're new to the program, we are called the children of the light. What it means is that we are people who walk in the way of the light, in the way of righteousness and holiness, and seek to find a close relationship to our Creator so that we can find favor in the eyes of God. That's the point, though. Now, there are words that we don't use here, the, the way of the light. For more information about words we use and don't use, please look at my other program. So we'll give you more information about word and words and usage and why we don't use a certain words or refer to ourselves by a certain name. Here, the way of the light. We are guided by the by the Aya Awareness Guide. It's an Aya Awareness that was revealed to us and we are now imparting this knowledge to others. You know, there's an old saying, many are called but chosen are few. So God will get this right. Life is what you make it. You live the life you love, you love the life you live. You cannot end up in the wrong place. Wherever you end up, you're supposed to be there. Where you end up will depend on the life you lead. In previous programs, uh, when I talk about sin, I mention that we're supposed to sin, but we're not meant to sin. In this example, I will use it here as well. You're supposed to end up wherever you end up. You gotta get this right. But you are not meant to end up there. The principles are the same. And let me break that down a little bit. For example, bad trees will produce bad fruits. You can't help them. A tree will be known by its fruits. So, in this case, if somebody ends up being a, being of a criminal mind, if somebody ends up being of what you call small-minded, if somebody ends up being what you what you'd refer to as he's a big thinker or he's a dreamer, he likes to dream big. These are all uh, conditions that you will find from particular trees. Some trees will produce, for example, in this metaphor I'm using, some trees will produce brightly colored fruits, while others will cut will produce less colorful fruits. Uh, some will produce yellow fruit, some will produce red fruit. For example, in this case, all it means is that some people will aspire to great things. Some people will just not want to settle for the norm. You know, a job, a nine-to-five job, uh, you know, a wife and kids, a car, a little money in the bank, and a house. Some people will want to become leaders. They want to be a lot more than just the average Joe. They want to be a lot more than, or they aspire rather, to be a lot more than they are. Maybe they're just a school teacher, a policeman, a soldier, a politician, a king. The fact is that who you are is largely determined by the trees you come from. Well, I can't do anything about that. So most people, as I say, aspire to great things will have come from chances are somewhere in their family background or in their family lineage, you will find that one or one parent or another or maybe both would have been the same way inclined. Throughout their lives, they would have seek greener pastures or bigger opportunity as opposed to settling for what they got given or what they got told. Uh, most people would go out there and seek answers to the questions they have. And most people go out of their way seeking knowledge, while others will just settle for the information they got given by others. Those people will almost certainly, um, most of those people will almost certainly be misled by some one leader or another. Very rare they'll find a leader that comes along that will actually tell them, I don't want to use the word truth, 
it's no such thing, but they will actually give them good and proper information according to the circumstance, according to that which they see, and according to the time. They're very different things. For example, let me break that down a little bit because each I have to break down each step here so that you understand what I'm saying. For example, the information you get given, it may just well be the right one because that's that's what you may be seeking. For example, people who go to church, see you know seeking Jesus Christ or seeking a relationship to Jesus Christ or they're seeking to connect. With Jesus Christ or the Holy Ghost or the Spirit or the Father or the Son and the Holy Ghost. If you're going to church seeking that kind of encounter, that kind of um, manifestation, that kind of uh, you know closeness or relationship, you more or less will find it in that particular place you go seeking it. Maybe it's a Christian church. If you wanted to connect with the Buddha and you go to the, the Buddhist temple, you may mo you more or less will, will kind of find what you're looking for in those places. Because all they'll be talking about is Buddha all day. And of course, if that's what you go there for, that's what you will get. If you want to be a pilot, you, you go where like-minded people are, talking about planes and flying and so on. You will gravitate around the crowd that you aspire to. If you're an anarchist, if you are a rebel rouser, if you are one who just like chaos and disorder, you will love the streets. If you like turmoil in your life and so on, you will be hooked up, you know, you'll be more or less on some of these opioids or uh, amphetamine or some kind of drug that, that, that gives you that rush and that kind of lifestyle and that adrenaline rush that you see. You'll gravitate around that, that kind of circle. As the old saying goes, show me your company, I tell you who you are. Though that's not always the case. Some, some, some people, and I'll use this metaphor again, some trees will end up in bad gardens. Uh, for example, some people will end up in bad situation around bad people, not necessarily because they want to be there. For example, a woman will be work, but may work in a gambling shop, not necessarily because she likes gambling or she's a gambler, or that she wants to be around that kind of crowd, but it's just a job opportunity and she took the opportunity, not necessarily because she really wants to work there. Some people work in strip clubs. Uh, you know, I can attest to for most of these things in my younger years, uh, I work in lots of companies. I used to work in logistics and managing large fleets of vehicles. So uh, sometimes you'll have good people end up in prison and you wonder how did that happen? I was talking to someone before and I told him, you know, don't um, laugh too loud about people who end up in jail because let me tell you something, you don't have to do very much to end up in that place at all. Yeah, they said a lot of things, they said a lot of things, I know. Uh, you just have to drink one too many, maybe you have an extra glass of wine, and that police officer comes behind you who really wants to ruin your, your life and ruin your day. <laughs> For whatever reason, maybe he's got a toothache and he's like a grumpy old lion. Whatever it is that may, you know, they come calling, you, you may end up with an officer with a bad attitude towards people and all the world and his fellow man in contempt. So you may you may end up in situations like that and maybe you had an extra glass of wine and it tips you it tips the scale for them. It tips you over that that limit that, that they pass legislation and set. Not necessarily because you're a criminal, not necessarily because you do something wrong. It's just that they set a certain you know guideline and if you don't adhere adhere to that guideline or maybe by mistake you had an extra glass of wine, or maybe they ban vaping or smoking vape, vape and you uh, and you pull it out and, and just forgot or whatever. And he just decided to be difficult and not cut you a slack or something. You could just do something simple, or, you know, not necessarily that you're a dangerous criminal while you may end up in prison. Uh, you, you know, not paying your counter tax, not paying a TV license, not paying these things, you could end up in jail. Not a uh, prison, not necessarily because you're an evil, wicked, bad person. Most people, their perception of prison is that only monsters go there. It's not so at all. You know, not so at all. You've got a lot of people that, um, a lot of people that are there shouldn't be there at all. Uh, they have done no wrong to their fellow man. They have done no, they have, they have committed no injury, harm or loss to their fellow man. 
yet they end up in these wicked satanic places uh, run by so and I'm, and I'm not um saying that all prisons are run by some you know governors there of these prisons that may want to do good but the sheer weight of 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 the wicked and the other wicked ones around them may prevent them from doing any sort of good you go to prison for example and you come out worse than you went in you lost your family you you you, you lost all your money and your income for example uh, you, you you have a criminal record you you can't get a job it's like they set you up to fail the, the system is designed it's designed to fail i know i know i know yeah, when you when you take away all hope and damage somebody's reputation by giving them a criminal record so serving the time for the crime is not good enough they have to damage him further and these are secondary destructive measures double jeopardy it's, a, it's like punishing you twice for the same for the same offense or for the same crime or for the same wrong it's not good enough you serve your time and get on with your life like the rest of like everybody else they have to damage you with the records and and all kinds of things against your name blacklists and whatnot you talk too loud uh, you, you know they, they put you in a blacklist and you can't get a job here and you can't get a loan to get a mortgage you, 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 you literally you can't pass a criminal record check that they put all kind of things against your name I, I, I can attest to all of this monstrosity it is a monstrous imposition upon society that, that, that has nothing better to do with your time and to try and destroy the lives of their fellow man and woman and it's a real disgrace but I won't get into that um, today too much we'll leave that for, for for another program so all that I'm describing there fits in the category of those who have not done enough and are found and will be found to be unworthy all that all those litany of charges and all those wrongs and unlawful acts against one against their fellow man I'm, I'm describing there is fits a particular group of the hell-bound sinners that are heading straight for the lake of that is why i say that i don't blur i don't i don't get any pleasure that they're that, that they won't be saved but what i'm saying is that because of the wickedness they've done to others and the life they lead will determine where they end up you, you cannot end up in the wrong place you're supposed to end up there because you were wicked or sinful or you didn't want to know God. Knowledge is the key and if you're informed then you can make informed decisions. Uh, you know I want to uh, say to everybody stay away from these people. Uh, you, you cannot defeat the system because it's designed with, 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 with things that are, have nothing to do with law. And the thing about it is those who monitor and is in charge of you know, the foot soldiers, you know, those muscle for hire, you cannot get a passport, you cannot get a national insurance number, you cannot get an, an ID card, a resident permit, you, 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 you cannot travel, you cannot this, you cannot that, you're a criminal. How many of these laws they pass blocking every avenue you could escape the system? How many of these laws they pass every year just to prevent you from becoming something just to prevent you from escaping their tentacles every single law seems to trigger another block you go to prison for example and there's another law that triggers another another law and another law triggers another law and this one triggers that it's, it was only one charge only one charge and all of a sudden you have 25 different charges because the first charge triggered 25 different ones and every single one of those charges blocking every avenue of, of getting out of this, this this evil situation they put you in. I can attest to all of this satanic wickedness myself. I think I know what I'm talking about. I can back it up with facts. Everything I speak of is factual. If it's not factual, I'll say so. But whatever I speak, I have a wealth of experience. A wealth of of experience experience is all we got without experience you're nothing well, what could you possibly tell somebody who is uh, for example been to jail have you ever been to jail no so what, what can you talk about it what, what can you talk about that experience have you ever taken drugs no what can you talk about according to some people this or that what can you talk about people who's falling falling by the wayside 
But what can you talk about people, you know, who's fallen in our time? Have you ever been poor? I feel most people, you know, most people is, have always had jobs and money in their bank account. They've been never really experienced poverty. Have you ever slept? Uh, have you ever been kicked out of your your home because you couldn't pay the rent and have to sleep in your car for a few months or sleep on the streets for a few years? Not not necessarily because you want to, but because you know you were put in some situation. Maybe they caught you. I don't know with a bit of marijuana and you they take they take your car and all your money and all you got ruin your life. Your family lost your job. Now you're on the streets. You were doing pretty well without any government help. And all of a sudden, they, they take it all from you. They did it. The law didn't do anything. They did it. And they know they did it. But they will say you broke the law. There's nothing to do with the law. It's they who did it. They who ruined your life. You were doing pretty well without them. But all of a sudden, now you're broke. And homeless. Quite possibly lost your family. Your kids don't want to talk to you. They ruined so many people's lives. I am not saying the system don't work sometimes. It does work sometimes, but you're kind of hard pressed to see where exactly it works properly or the way it's supposed to, or you'd like it to, or at least reasonably working. You're kind of hard pressed to see any function of the system that, that works reasonably, but one could say, well, that's reasonable. You're hard pressed to, to find it. So all of this I'm describing fits perfectly in a category of people who will be found wanting, who will be found to be unworthy. And this is why I say, and this is broad, this is broad throughout the whole system in every single country in the world. I'm not just talking about the United Kingdom only. I'm talking the world. So these, all these I'm describing, people in these situations, I'm describing who deliberately do these things against others, the fellow man. And they fit very comfortably in, 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 in that's why I say, and most of them, they run the system. Most people, one way or another, will work in the system. Most people are not independent workers, they, they're not self employed. The majority works in the system, and it's the majority, the 99% I'm talking about. The 99% of people will be found wanting on that final day. When they cross over, they will be, they'll be judged. They're already judged while they are alive. What, throughout, the, throughout your life's journey, every sin that you, accum you, you accumulate sins as you go along, the more sin you commit is the more you're weighed down by the sheer burden of your, 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 your sinfulness and all the sinful deeds you, you've done throughout your life. And all those in law, they'll say, tot up. They, they, they're totting up their destruction. Every time you sin, it's like you're driving, you're hammering a nail in your hands, making your own cross, your own crucifixion on a cross, your own cross that you carry, your own cross that you bear. You're actually, every time you're, you're, you're driving that nail deeper in your own hands. Because there'll be no grand day where someone will will be judging you for anything. You are judge, being judged now, while you're alive. You are the judge, jury, and executioner of your own soul. You will be judged according to your deeds, what you have done. Many people, the school of thought here, and most religions will teach that God is going to sentence you, and Jesus is going to damn your soul, and all of that idiotic concept there that is doctrinal thinking of men religion religion will tell you that god is going to do this to you and god is going to do that to you god is the monster that's going to kill you god is the monster that's going to burn you in eternal flames before eternity god is the monster that's going to, to, to judge you and next next and you next for the chop and you for the back and you for the character and you for the stick God has nothing to do with us, is what it is. And most people don't understand this. They think God has some, they think God created man. God did not make, God did not make man. God did not create man. But I won't get into that. Stay tuned if you, I'm uploading new videos and this will also be one of the, the topics.
So, so have a look at our channel to see that did God create man? That will be one of the, the, the topics I discussed there. Did God create man? So have a look at my channel there and listen to that video if you, if you will. And I hope when you do, you'll be a little more informed. So all of these things, one will be, you know, you, you, as you go throughout your lives, as you, as you go th as you, throughout your life's journey, you will, the candle that you have, it will burn either brighter, the burning lower, the more sin you accumulate, the more the sheer weight of your sin and depravity, your candles will burn lower and lower in that darkness that you are in. Your candles will be burning lower and lower each time you sin. And whenever you reach a point where your fire break is too low, the lions will jump in. Because the demo, the, you know, the diabolic, they're circling. I use the metaphor of the lion. A lion is circling your firewall. And what will happen is that the, 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 the more you sin is the lower your fire breaks, uh, you know, burn lower and lower until your fire break is too low and the demons jump in, the lions jump in and tear you apart because they're really waiting to enslave you in hell. There's two, there's two hells and there's three types of death. There is the mortal debt, there is the immortal debt, and the third debt is when, you're, when you have not taken part in the third resurrection. But I will discuss that in, 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 in a separate um, program. There is death there too. I have seen it. But I want to discuss it here. And of course there is the death resurrection. They will never be resurrected. They will never be renewed. Those souls will remain or dormant forever. Stay tuned, we're uploading new videos all the time. Please check out the channel for the other videos I'm, uh, that I'm discussing here. So, you, wherever you end up after you die, you're supposed to end up there. Because all the things you do throughout your lives, for example, you go to, you go to particular churches to suit your need. So you will go to a, a particular church because you are a voodoo worker, or you like the idea of fiancés, a voodoo or, or a witch worship in a wicca. So you will do, you will gravitate to those particular religious denominations. I don't really want to put those in the category of religious. I'm not sure religious people would appreciate a comparison, but uh, we just have to call them for what they are. They claim their religions, or they claim their uh, something to do with divine something divinity of some kind and it is true they are even satanic cults uh, you know practice their own divinity uh, what do you think they're conjuring up when you're talking to the spirits and it is far more powerful than man and anything that is far more powerful then of course it, it, it is um, somewhat divine because uh, to be divine, it depends on your definition of what is divine. Some people will just use only of the angelic uh, persuasion that that is divine. But what if you're not religious and you're, uh, I don't know, a science, you, you like seances? Whatever comes, what, what, whatever you conjure up, you could also refer to it as divine because it is far more powerful than uh, souls can do, souls as they, they, they possess powers beyond our understanding. Uh, to those people, that, that you know, they're divine. It, it just depends on what you mean. If you want to, you know, you could say good, there's two types of good. So then you'll be, you'll be saying, but how can good people end up in hell? Of course, I just told you. Even although they never do anything, you could say wrong, rape, rob, steal, murder, but they do a lot of other things. They may not be the worst of sinners, but they're sinners nonetheless. And they continue to exhibit these traits throughout their lives without ever wanting to change, of course, and repent for their sins and, and stop doing all that foolishness they're doing, all that sinful stuff they get up to, especially after 12. So there's, of course, two types of sinners. There are those who are definitely unworthy, and they know themselves, 
they sink so far in the depravity, they, they, they don't even look upwards anymore. I think some of them never did. They would have those people, they walk and they look forwards, they look sideways, they look backwards, they look down, but they never look up. They have no business up there. They never look up from whence cometh or salvation. Those who walk in the way of the light, we are children of the light. We pray, we look up from whence cometh or salvation or help. For those who look down when they pray, I'm not sure why they do it, but if they only understood the gesture they're doing, maybe they would stop doing it. Most people will never look up. They have no business up there. Most people will never call the name of God because they don't believe in God. They want nothing to do with God and God wants nothing to do with them as a consequence. Not that God never wanted anything to do with them. They just never wanted anything to do with, with God. I, you notice I don't say Him or her. God is not a man. God is not a thing. You cannot define your Creator. You're wasting your time. But for more than that, we'll leave that for another discussion. So, the, the two types of good, so, so those that are the, wor the worst form of evil, and then you, you have just those average Joe, the average fellow that pass you every day, that man of fun, find their way to God before they die. That they too all, despite they never committed any real wrongs, I don't like to use the word crimes, crime is pertaining to government law, then you, you have those people now who are just monsters, serial killers, serial rapists, and so on, that those people are just seriously depraved. So who are the chosen ones? People who walk in the way of righteousness and holiness, but you have to understand what righteousness and holiness is. Now, righteousness and holiness is not like much people understand it. It's a misunderstanding of many people what it is. Most people you talk to, they say, well, yeah, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Boogery, fornication, sodomy, all those, they, they'll say, I don't see nothing wrong with that. The pastor do it. <laughs> they'll say, my pastor do it, and he boogered his wife. He, he you know, he commit boogery. Even if it's not with a man, he's, he's still a booger. <laughs> he still commit all those abominable acts. Mostly after 12, that thing is all quiet. The evil spirits are looking along, cheering him on. There, there's a lot of things that people think is not wrong. I don't like to use the word wrong or right. It's not such a thing. And I don't want to go into word usage in this program, but I'll do that in a separate discussion. So... Many people don't think that what they're doing is wrong. I, I hear a lot of that. I, I was listening to a few religious groups the other day because I like to do my research so that when I come and talk something, I, I'm not talking what I heard that somebody else say. I can't hear, I hear it for myself what they're talking about. And what most of these other religious groups will say, I, I hear them all swearing and cussing out each other and saying a lot of profanities. And a lot, there's so much that you, you know, just check out our videos and what we do and what we don't do. Oh my God, they're not religious. Of course, we're not religious. What, what, what is religion? Re religion is a theological concept. That's all religion is, mingled with philosophy. That's all it really is. There's a splash of philosophy and more about theology, a theological concept. That's all it really is. But I, I don't want to get into all of that. So they will think that. Um, Punishing their children by starving the poor kid or, you know, locking the kid up in the house and, or, or swearing at the kid or they believe they're still Christians, they, they believe they're Muslims, they believe they're Jews, they believe they're Mormons, they believe they do all these wickedness to their children. How many times a year of all these horrors that parents do all these things to their kids? And they believe it's fine. Uh, they, they, they believe all these things are fine. And they go to church every Sunday and play church. And then when they finish playing church and they all get, then they, they go back home more uh, modeled up than they went in. But with all that religious and biblical babble. Because the, 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 I can guarantee you most of these pastors, though, the 99% of them don't know what they're talking about. For example, the first thing the man will tell you is that God say, that, that's the first thing he will tell you. He's talking of things he know nothing about. The first thing he holds up the book and he say, God wrote this. 
This is the word of God. Well, he may not say God wrote it, but he said it's the word of God. That's making that's a statement of fact. If you're going to declare such a thing, you, you're making a statement of you're saying God wrote it. That means you know. That's a statement of fact. If you come and say I did something, you'd be, you better be able to back it up. Otherwise, I'm going to hold you accountable. Quite frankly, most of them are not even accountable. I'm just telling you the plain facts. You go to the mosque, and uh, just I'm, I'm not picking on any religion. I'm just pointing out some facts here. I'm not interested in religion at all. They can't do nothing for me. God provides all. You go to any mosque, and everybody's face is firmly on the ground, and, and, and the backside is up. In, it, it, it's unbelievable to, to see what religion makes people become. I'm not telling you anything that's not, you go to a mosque, you can see for yourself. I'm not telling you anything that's no, there's no, there's nothing new under the sun. I'm not telling you anything that you, you can't see for yourself. Just, just put it, just, just Google it or something, if you, if you haven't been to a mosque. I can back it up with facts. I've got all the evidence to prove it. You go to a temple, a Hindu temple, and it's the same thing. The man is there feeding a rat or some donkey or something. Some cow or something. You go to some of these Hindu ceremonies, there's ritualistic ceremonies, and you see the cow walking on these people, and he, he willingly, the woman willingly, lie herself down in front of the, the two-ton, the one-ton animal. You know the kind of damage that animal could do to you if it steps in your stomach? And the foolish man or the foolish woman even putting their children there for the animal to step on the poor kid. That's how deluded and warped their minds are. Almost beyond saving. I'm not telling you anything that is no. I'm not saying I'm not making anything up. I'm just telling you the plain off. I'm just telling you what's there. You can Google it and you see it. You go to one of those Hindu ceremonies where they do all this nonsense. And you will do all those ritualistic customs and practices and you will see it i'm not saying all hindus do it there are different versions of this hinduism anything with ism catholicism hinduism islamism whatever is it they, they all have different versions of the same thing you go to a buddhist temple and you you, you know you'll be forgiven to believe that it's a rock there isn't a man or his mother, the way he show reverence and honor to that piece of rock, with a big stomach, they carve from a piece of a, a piece of rock, the image of a man with a very big stomach, like they use rather full, and they venerate the piece of rock. They show reverence and honor to the rock to the point they bow down to it, and they won't move. They won't move unless nature calls, or they're about to die or something. But they're so devoted to that piece of rock. I mean, how could somebody be that warped in their minds? How could somebody be that lost that he believed bowing down to a piece of stone? I mean, many things in the Bible I don't agree with, but some things are, are they, you know, they're, spot, they're, they're, they're correct about saying some things. About idol worshipping and blasphemy. The Bible is right about many things. So is the Quran. So is the Talmud. So is the book of the devil. So is the book of Mormons. So is the book of Wicca. So is the book of the Amish and the Jehovah Witness and, and, and the other. I wouldn't call most of them religions. But so is the other groups out there. I am not telling you anything new and I'm not telling any lie on nobody. I am just simply stating what I see out there and you can see for yourselves. Just go and have a look and you'll see all that I'm talking about. I can pick any, if you go to Wicca, it's the same thing. Those who claim to be witches and warlocks and all the other crazy trans-meditational nonsense stuff that they do there, they all believe they become God. So they don't believe in a God, they believe they become God after they die or throughout their lives while being witches. If you go to a, a, a seance, if you, if you go to a, a you know voodoo worshiper, he believes somehow the spirits of God and that's who he worships. And he cut the little the, the chicken's head off and he, he sprinkled the blood of the chicken on the altar. And they do all that, you know, jumping around and 
jumping around the fire and whatever they do there and they do all this voodoo and witchcraft and all this madness I am not telling you anything new it's all there for you to see you pick any religion and we can talk about it Mormons, Mormons believe in uh, you know Mormons are not necessarily Christians they, they believe in more than one God they believe Jesus is a God they believe the creator of the universe is a God you got Jehovah Witnesses they believe this is a similar thing. They, they, they have their own doctrinal thinking. That is a, a little different from Christianity. Hence, they have all these versions of Christianity. I'm not telling you, every single religion out there, I can, we can go through the, the, the lot of them. I'm not here criticizing any religion. I'm just pointing out some facts that are there, readily available for all to see. Here at the Way of the Light, we don't do any. We are none of the religious denominations of the day none we do no such thing we have no seances we have no rules and regulations we have no law that governs our people we, you don't get you you're free to come you're free to go we don't tell you what to do we don't tell you what to pray how to pray where to pray we don't tell you to do anything all we follow as children of the light is the higher awareness guide which is the eternal guide, the ministry or oh, wait it's not a ministry but anyway use it term what you used it. All it is, it's a way of life. Following, walking in the path of righteousness and holiness in order to find favor in the eyes of God. That's all we do. Follow the higher awareness standard, which is, which was revealed. It was through by divine intervention that we came into this higher level of awareness, which we follow. And as you can see from what I've been discussing, None of the other religions have this path. They're not following this way of light. They're firmly anchored to the darks. I like to say that everybody can, every, all can see the mountain, but only few of us knows how to get there. Only few of us. Those souls that have accumulated so much sin by sheer weight of their sins, they're weighed down and shackled firmly to the darkness. They will be damned souls. They will never ascend to the light. They will remain firmly in hell for eternity. And there's two types of hell. There is the there is hell, which is the afterlife. That is hell. And death, death itself, death itself, death, death is hell. Yes, it is the after. The dead is what you see in the grave, the, the bones. That, that's when you say he's dead. The afterlife, what you call dead, what most people refer to as dead, is hell. Once you cross from this dimension to the afterlife, you're in hell. But not all will remain there. Some of us who walk in the way of the light, some of us who are the children of the light, we ascend to the light because our candles burn very bright. We, we, we kept going in the path of righteousness and holiness so that our candles can burn very bright. There's two types of, of, of death. So when you die, that's the first type of mortal death. When you pass from mortality to immortality in that eternal existence called hell, or some people refer to as death. Or the afterlife. But in hell, or it itself, there is a second death because the diabolic can kill other souls there. And I have seen that myself. They can take other souls, they, they can, they, they, it's not the life, you can't say the life of other souls. They can kill other souls there. And what, and, and, and the type of death that I've seen there is uh, different from the dead we know, although similar. And the diabolic is so evil and dark that they will never free the souls of those to whom they will be there for eternity. In that same place, that's what I saw. I can only tell you what I saw. I couldn't believe how they killed each other there. 
And the diabolic turned to me this, what I call the third kind. It's the only kind I see do this kind of thing in hell. There are many different types of them. But they all have one particular characteristic. Even if they don't have the other two, they all have one primary characteristic. So we're uploading new videos every day. Stay tuned if you become a member of the if you become a, a member of the ministry. Uh, then obviously you will come into that kind of knowledge because it's a more deeper kind of knowledge you won't get anywhere else. Uh, there's so much to talk about when it comes to the diabolic. There's so much to, to talk about when it comes to but, but we won't get into that. It'll take another hour or two. Uh, you know, but those training programs that we'll be doing. So there's two types of debt, and I've explained those two. And there's three types of debt. The third type of debt is what I call the third resurrection, but I will leave that for a separate program. So I will leave that for a separate program, the third resurrection. I will also talk about the first and second resurrection. Those are particularly um, important for those who want to walk in the way of the light. That is of fundamental importance. Uh, so I'll talk about those that are connected because uh, you can't get one without the other. Uh, but the third resurrection has nothing to do with, uh, as uh, is a separate thing. Uh, so I'll talk about that separately as well. And I I think that concludes the, the, the program for today. So I, I, I hope you have learned something from today's discussion. I hope you're, you're now more informed and you'll be able to make a more informed decision. And I hope that whatever decision you make about your spiritual journey, and I hope you do, you're on a spiritual journey. I hope, I hope um, you you uh, we uh, you know. I hope you will see the light, and we welcome one and all to the light. The way of the light is a lifestyle. It's not a corporation. It's not a business. It's not a name on a building. It's not a ministry. It's a lifestyle. It's the way we lead our lives, walking in the way of righteousness and holiness, guided by the angels in order to find favor in the eyes of our creator. And I'll leave you with one more thing. I'll say this in all the programs. And I'll say it here. If whatever you do in your life does not bring you closer or allow you to form a close and closer relationship to your creator and find that strong and stronger connection to your creator, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your life, and you're wasting your soul, and you will be wasting your eternity in hell. God bless you all. May the grace of our Creator be with us and bless us always. And I hope to see you in the next program. Why not click on that link in the description below, which will take you to a separate page. There you can show us the love and support by looking through our programs there and picking maybe one or two of the packages that you'd like to learn more about. And we also have tutorials about how you can make your own programs and how you can edit them and upload them onto YouTube and other social media sites. Why don't you go ahead and click on that link and I'll see you in the next program. Us, scrolling down by checking out our other packages which you can find in this section down here and you can click on our patreon page here or our spotify page boss bro how are you doing sir how are you doing yeah, well, that's good. huh that's good. Uh, you you know what you're doing you might me sit down and talk to you. Look, wait, I'm just up to the train, mate. Oh, yeah, no. I've been here for half hour already, see? Yeah, yeah, no. I'm in the air. What I'm doing, I'm just uh, making some background footage of some programs I do. So, I like to talk to people. <laughs> so, you, are you Christian? Oh, oh Catholic. Catholic. Yeah, you know, what it is that uh, my ministry is about uh, I am level of awareness. So, uh, we don't just believe in God, but we try to form a strong connection to God so that when we die, we have to create only that connection that can allow you to be renewed again. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, for example, if, and I saw, I saw it, they're like dead people. Mm -hmm. And I say to and it says, and I say to him, what are you still, what are you still doing here? You should have sent to the light. And it says to me, no, we didn't ascend to the light. Because uh, we're still waiting on our three drops of blood from Jesus Christ. What about the blood is going to save us? And I said, listen, did you believe in... It's not that I'm talk about other things, but did you actually believe in the world? And it held it said down, I just told the sign, I never said another word. And I asked the other one the same thing. 
and all of that. They believe in all the other stuff. But when it comes to forming that connection to God, they did not. And it's only that connection can save you. Nothing else. No cross, no blood, nothing but that connection with God. Well, the thought of actually being scared, they were scared. Oh, they, well, I mean, uh, they was, you know, I mean, possibly. No, well, you see, the thing is, they're possibly still they waiting for something to save them. Possibly they won't be. Oh, yeah, they, 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 they did look scared. They did look scared. That's the thing, but you see, like, the other night I was dying in my dream. And my soul was ascending to the light. It is pulling out of my body. And I literally hold it back and say, Father, I am not ready yet. There's, I have some unfinished business. There are people I need to tell. They need to know at least that which can help them to be renewed again after they die. And I literally pull my soul back because it was ascending to the heavens. This is what I was asking the Spirit. When you die, you should have ascended. You should never have been here. And they say, well, we didn't ascend. And I said, why? And one of them said to me, we didn't ascend. And I said, did you believe in God? And they just all went down their heads. And I'm trying to tell my Muslim brothers, my Christian brothers, my Buddhist brothers, my Hindu brothers and sisters, everyone. Without that connection, no religion is going to save you, no writings in a book is going to save you. Only that connection to your Creator. My yeah. brother? Oh, have a good evening, mate. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Mark. Mark. Mark Constantine. I'm the part finder. Thanks for that, Mark. Thanks well, for listening. Mate. I got that.
Here you can see it is already in uh, English subtitle. To get the program in your subtitles, simply click on the on our settings button here. And here you will see that the program is already in English. Uh, go ahead and click on the subtitle button there, and or you can translate the program in your own language by clicking on auto. So by clicking on auto translate, just select your country, and you can listen to the program in your own language. So we like to use father and mother of God here because. I know that he's not just male, God is male and female. Would you say he's male and female? He's, he's not male or female. No. He's like both. Him to receive the true glory. Edward. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. I, I, I'm terrible with names. What's your name? Edward. Edward. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Edward, uh, it's a very interesting sermon. I, uh, do you call it a sermon? Yeah, what do yeah. You call it? It's Mass? a sermon. Sermon. It's a mass. I the same thing though, like mass. Sermon. A mass is a communion service, right? Explain, man. I'm new to this thing. Okay, so uh, mass is the Roman Catholic word for a service where there is communion, the bread and the wine. <laughs> Uh, that's a communion specifically, service, specifically with the bread and wine. Yeah, that would be the that's the mass. Without uh, it, would be the sermon. Without it, it would be a, just a communion, a service. Um, so, uh, I mean, we we would have a we might call it a service of the word, um, but it's not a communion service. But we always do communion here. So uh, we do morning prayer in the week, and then and then within the communion service there is a sermon. Or an address or a talk okay so that that's yeah, because that's different the, 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 the traditional martin luther in your face kind of that's a, that's <laughs> also a sermon but it's a different style of different preaching style. it's a different style. more loud yeah <laughs> uh, and more um telling you more rhetorical around. more <laughs> rhetorical <laughs> They don't play with the words. <laughs> <laughs> they're very, yeah, they're very blunt about L and M and all that. I hear some preachers go up there and they shout it a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen it on um, on, uh, on 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 screen. You know, different preachers. Oh, oh yeah, they, they have their own style. Man. It's just fantastic. But uh, but yeah, I'm 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 not religious. I'm not religious at all. Um, so what I'm, the reason why I'm like coming here, I'm, I just like to know a bit more about because. Uh, is this a Church of England? So we we are a combined Church of England and United Reformed Church, Protestant. Church of England calls itself Catholic and Reformed, but um, oh, that's funny. <laughs> but it is Reformed. Protestant, Reformed. Protestant, Reformed. It, 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 you got to put it in because <laughs> I, I don't think um, they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. So are you local? Um. Yeah. 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 I'm local. See, I'm I'm trying to get into all of this religion thing but the thing is though i'm, I'm trying to see for example like, what is righteousness um i mean obviously righteousness is um living in a way in which you avoid causing harm to other people um, but um or, or to the to the planet um, but um i think the most important thing in uh, in any religion is your sense of god um that individual relationship between you and your maker god's presence and his love no. To actually so you, to, so to you, feel you God and, and love? Yeah, yeah. God, love? God loves you and looks but, out but for you. It, but isn't it the kind of human emotion? Are we confusing God with man? Isn't isn't that the preserve of man? Love, emotion. Peace? So I mean, we uh, 
We believe that the essence of God is love, and therefore our human love is a, a pale reflection of the, the glory of God's love. So we call God our Father, but He's not our Father, and in it's not the same as a human father. Uh, and human fathers are very, very poor imitations of the fatherhood of God. <laughs> and some people, some people find it difficult to call God father because their own experience of their fathers can be so poor. And they think, well, if God is a father, yeah, but God isn't like that. So we like to use father and mother of God here because I know he's not just male. God is male and female. So you say he's male and female, he's, he's not male or female. No. It's like both. You see, I, 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 did, did, he, did he love before he created us? Did he have love? Or he only had love after he created man? I don't know what what, what was he before he Well, that's impossible to it's not describe not what God is and who God is. It's unfathomable. You see, uh, to me, God is the ultimate reality. But did he create him? He couldn't be. He created it and inhabits it. Manifesting what he creates? Yeah. That's a good question. I want to get it right. Mm -hmm. So, can we give thanks every day? But a little life I have, oh, for the life I have for a short time, hmm. it could be required. So I really want to get it right. And that's why I ask these questions. It might sound strange to you. So, I mean, I, for me, um, it's um, the most important thing is holiness. to have time for meditation. What about um, holiness? What holiness. Do you what do you say that is? Uh, I think it was, it would be, it's having a sense of God's presence at all times. That, that, that's how I would describe my holiness. I think a sense of God's presence at all times. I ask a gentleman once, I say to him, who is creating you on the other side? Who are you made? What's your name? And he says, I believe you. Okay. I say, tell me. Who are you made on the other side? I just look at it. Who's your father? And he says, Jesus Christ. Um, you, there is no book in the world that gives straightforward answers. We have to, we have to, we have to look at, uh, we have to look at scripture, but we have to use our own experience. And yeah. I go directly to the source. That is why I ask the demon. I don't invite the name to my body for possession. My brother, it was a pleasure. And I will see you again in August. I'm on a dress. Well, I hope to see you again. It was a pleasure. Okay. What's, your, what's your name again? I'm Edward. Edward. I, I like the history of England. I lived there most of my life. Sorry? I like the history of England. I lived yes. there most of my life. Something will work out. You know what? Saying that. So I know I won't be here for today. Okay. But, you know what? I've lived most of my life here. Where are they do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all beings in life, the one of whom we exist? We believe in the first Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? Do you believe and trust in Him? Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world? <laughs> this is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated in all kinds of people in our prayers. First, let us remember all those who
about three of us. But we have all these two prayers at home. Remember those who are sick and suffering, those who need prayer, healing prayers, to pray for the estate, to pray for our doctors, our nurses, our hospitals. So, Lord, in your mercy, response, hear our prayer. Dear God, we thank you for keeping us and our family safe through the week. We may not know what will happen today and the coming week. Lord, we are certain that we can trust in your goodness, faithfulness, and unfailing love. Lord, we are confident that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. And may we bless the state that answers prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We still have brothers and sisters who are present here with us and those who are at home watching us on Zoom. May all be blessed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask for blessing and guidance of Edward and Joseph, our children, and they may meet the children in the right direction. We pray for the center of our children, pain and voluntary, and all the rest of the center, that their health will come, because people are to be, they will be free to be at home when they enter our building. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the bereaved, those we know of and those we do not know, those who are close to us. We remember this time we had a base family, say she was murdered for whatever reason, somebody's daughter. We pray for her family that they will find peace. We pray for Nicola, Nicola Booth, Bully's family and friends. That some news will come soon. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our young people who through hate have become killers, that they too will find you and stop killing on their beds. Father, forgive them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Remember those who are suffering due to the to the earthquake and to all some the flowers of land of edge. Lord, we are all, we are all seven by the vastness of us all. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept our prayer for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. The peace of Christ be always with you. And all the Lord also be with you. As Joe said last week, we are back to be free to engage in warm embraces of peace. But if you do not feel comfortable with that, Please use our old fashioned way and it will be clear to other people that it's the way in which you share peace and close the world place peace with you. Generous God, creator and redeemer and sustainer, that for the day we prepare this money, symbol of the work we have given us to do. Use it to read us. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, you, we have this bread and this wine to set before you. Fruit of the earth and work of the human hands. May they become from us the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Blessed are you, God of all heaven. The Lord is here. The Spirit is here. Lift up your hands. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give us your hands. Give thanks to the grace. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word. And all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image. 
and it placed us in the garden of the Holy Spirit. And so we chose the path of prevention. You do not stand back with your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and you taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the soul of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you, and saying, set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave it thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave it to He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, do this in remembrance of me. This blood is shed for all. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand and heart. And we long for his coming in glory. As we call the one of the Holy Spirit, our Father, Father, and Holy Spirit, let these gifts to your creation be the one of Form us into the likeness of Christ, and make us a way of offering you your sins. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from the heart. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to all your saints at the table in your people, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, my Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Savior tells us so.
To hear the program in your own language, click on the subtitle. Here you can see it is already in uh, English subtitle. To get the program in your subtitles, simply click on the on our settings button here. And here you will see that the program is already in English. Uh, go ahead and click on the subtitle button there. and Or you can translate the program in your own language by clicking on auto. So by clicking on auto translate, just select your country and you can listen to the program in your own language click on subtitle there and as you, 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 you do worship him right yes you must know who he is you're not going to worship yes. something you don't know. he's the lord of the lords yeah. lord of the world he's the creator of everything in this world you know the Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm just here to see one of the more experienced okay. he's, he's gone away at the moment. He's not in the country. And what about the one that's here? Who's the, um, like one of your more learned? Uh, uh, the man that led the prayer, you mean? Or somebody is else? He, is he, uh, I would like to speak to a few of them, if they are available, like one or two or all of them. Um, okay, it's not going to be possible now because the Imam just left and there's no other Imams here. Um, One of your um, guys told me that as soon as he's finished, he'll let me know. One of my uh, uh, guys? Yeah, you will. Who, who is it that you spoke with? Uh, so I thought, alright, I'll just, I'll just wait then. So that's, that's kind of, kind of... I'm just okay. any one of your imams, you know, the, the the ones who know about, you know, Quranic stuff. Okay, because um, I know for sure that the imams left. Is there only one that knows There's, there's only one that's here now. Ah, uh, so. Because at this time, because it's the last prayer of the day, there's no need for um, imam to stay. He was only here to lead the prayer and he had classes before and he's been here like, most of the day, so... Uh, who else can I talk to that knows about... Uh... Other than the Imam, there isn't anyone else, really. Uh, have, have you come from far, or...? Well... What, what time to what time? Because I'm rather disappointed that... Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> we're not scholars. <laughs> yeah, no, well, uh, we're not, but we can we can we can describe for us who is Allah, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> who is Allah? Who, who, for who do we pray? Who, who do we worship, you know? It's a simple thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that's in fact, I mean? in fact I don't, I don't think I need your scholars. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> it should be pretty easy to I mean you do pray to someone. Yeah. Of course. And you know who you pray to. To the creator, not the creation. It's easy. It's very yeah. easy. We we, adore, we worship the creator, not the not the creation. It's easy to say the wrong thing as well. the creator. Exactly, and and I'm I'm a bit cons, you know concerned of. I don't want to be yes. saying the wrong thing. You know, I don't want to be seen, and I don't want to mislead you. Oh, to, no, you no. know. Do you know what? It, it would um, be a big deal if 
ask a few questions. Yeah, anyway, look, I mean, if yeah, you want, yeah. if you want, come as come around, you know, come around. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you, do, you, you do worship him, right? Yes. You must know who he is. You're not going to worship yes. something you don't. Know. He's the Lord of the Lords, yeah. Lord of the world. He's the Creator of everything in this world. You know, the sun, the universe, the moon. Everything. So, so you're describing the creation, the, but what you're not yes. telling me is who is this? I can't, I can't really describe who. You know, it's impossible. It's impossible because you know we are limited. So where is he? Where, where is the? What's your There is no such a thing as a place. Do you know what I mean? You know such a thing. Oh, I can't say he's in the sky. You know. So another thing is, so you're here to worship. Mm -hmm. That's right. What is worship? What is the we, it's the five it's the five daily prayers um, they are compulsory right um, and it's, it's we, we are obliged to do this the five the five mm -hmm. prayers so, it starts from the sunrise till sunset so he so he tells us to do it yes so if he tells us to do it he rules by force. No, by force. If we don't do it, it's the, look. I, let me just say, look. We don't need uh, uh, Allah doesn't need us. No, Allah doesn't need us. He, he has no partners. No, you're correct. He has no partners. No, he has no, no sons. Of course not. No. You know what I mean? Oh Jesus! You can, you can. But what about him? We don't see him as a uh, son of God. Son of, but a prophet. It is a prophet. What is a prophet to you? Is he very it's important? A messenger. messenger. Like the last messenger is the prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We also see Isa, Isa which is Jesus. The, the Christians they call him Jesus. They call it. They call him Jesus, right? Uh. Am I right? <laughs> Help me here, because you're <laughs> more will, into. Will, will, no, will, you know, will, I'm, will, I'm will, a north. I'm will, an amateur. No, that's all right. That's all right. Trust me. But um, we are. <laughs> I'm not the son of God. <laughs> he is the pro, apparently. Tell me, um, who, who is he coming back to save? You believe in him? Um, you believe he was a prophet? Yes. But how important is this prophet to you? What, what is he going to do for you? Is, is he going to come back to save us all? No. Save you? Me? No. What, why do we believe in him? In him, it was a message. The message, yeah. the message was the same, but the people have you know, the believed. Christians the people say has that. changed the message. Yeah. They've corrupted but the Christi him. But the Christians say. You brought up a Christian. <laughs> right. Trust me. Yeah, they don't believe. I don't think they just I don't think they, 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 they Some of them do, some of them yeah. don't. Right. But the, 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 the tricky thing I'm trying to figure out is this. If he's important, mm. if he's coming back again from where? I'm not sure. But he's coming back to save us all. Then we have to know a lot more about him. About who? Jesus? Yeah. Well, he's coming back. And you had better have a good testimony, right? No, because he's coming back. He's a different purpose. I mean... So you, you believe he's coming back? You believe there's such a thing? We believe he's coming, he's coming back. back. All, but, the prophets, um, all the prophets are coming back? Uh, no. Only Jesus? Apparently. I can't really say much about I'm. I'm a bit, you know... I understand. I understand. I'm not. That's all right. That's all right. What, I, what I'm trying to say is that... We, we have to we know why we are here. So, they, no. so the book... Can the book save yeah, he can save them because... It's, so let's say like every single thing like he needs a manual instructions, right? A manual like, imagine like you buy a phone, it comes with a manual instructions, how to use it. Um, You're making it up? No, I'm not because this is, this is from the all other religions. So I was a Christian before. I've been to other religions before, so I came from... We have to know why we do these things, otherwise we're wasting our time. Right. You see, a few years ago, a messenger came to me, and he tell me, he says humans worship their God in the wrong way. Hi everyone, now today I'm going to show you how to navigate to our channel quick and easy. Tap the channel name PZ. Tap the channel name PGTL101, enter, and or you will see a list of our videos. Today's discussion will be about the first resurrection. What is the first resurrection? And how can we take part in it? In order to walk in the way of the light, one has to connect, make that spiritual umbilical connection to his or creator. There is three types of awareness, three types of renewal, three types of resurrection. Let's deal with the first type of awareness. 
there's two types of this awareness. One, you are aware that I'm talking to you now from wherever you are in the world. I'm broadcasting from England, more specifically London. So there are three types of renewal, three types of awareness, three types of resurrection. What do I mean by this? Before I explain the three types of awareness, renewal and resurrection, let me start with the two types of awareness. So that's the first type. The second type of awareness is when you make that spiritual umbilical connection to your creator. You cannot make a spiritual connection with God. To make a connection with something, it's like a connection between you and your mother in the womb, that umbilical connection. To make a connection with someone is like you and somebody got emotionally involved. You and somebody make that connection. You have to physically be connected to someone. So you can't form a relationship with God. You can only form a relationship with man, with animals and so on. And maybe with a ghost or something. You would have to know what it is and see what it is. You cannot do these things with God. I will use the word God for the ease of conversation because that's what you're used to. Until you have attained a higher level of awareness, I will have to speak out of terms. So for now, I'll speak out of terms. Speaking in terms is mostly for council members and those who are and members of the, 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 the this way, the way of the light, who have obtained a higher level of awareness. So that's one type of awareness. The second type of awareness is when you make that spiritual umbilical connection to your creator. In order to make this spiritual umbilical connection to your creator, you have to have walked in the way of righteousness and holiness first. You cannot become holy unless you're righteous. So first you would have to have walked in the, you'd have to have been a righteous man or woman, meaning that you've done righteously. You've done righteous deeds, you've done the right things. There's no such thing as right or wrong, but I'll use this word for the sake of conversation. You can't be indulged in buggery, fornication, sodom, uh, adultery, lying and stealing, and killing and raping, you know, hating people. You, you can't be walking around with a poison, with a poison heart and a poison mind and as a consequence a poison soul, a dark soul, empty shell. You don't walk in the way of righteousness. You cannot become holy. And that's the whole truth. That's the holy truth. That's the holy fact. That's a fact. You cannot become holy unless you're righteous. You cannot take part in the first resurrection unless you're holy and righteous. Holiness and righteousness is two different things. Many people are righteous. Lots of churchgoers are righteous. The average man and woman you see walking up and down every day, going about their business, they are righteous people, the majority of them. They don't rape, they don't rob, they don't steal, they don't kill, and most of them don't like telling lies. Very hard to find one of those these days. But, ah, still have some faith in them. I don't believe most of them like telling lies. It's uh, getting to be a rare thing nowadays. You only have to look at your, uh, your, your, your you know, these local pastors and, and it's all about lies. Either they're telling lies on God, are they telling lies on man, or they're telling lies on what they call the devil. I always wanted to, I was struggling to form this spiritual connection. I, you know, I prayed. I, I, you know, I did a lot of soul searching. I followed everything to the book. I became John the Baptist the second. Uh, you know, at one point I wanted to step out there and blast them with a word from the wilderness. So I was really concerned that I did not have the spiritual connection to God. I could not feel the spiritual connection this umbilical spiritual connection to my creator was never there, was never connecting. Much like a child was connected by the placental or the umbilical connection to the mother, I was never connected to the creator. And that was, that's, that was my problem. That was my spiritual or one of my spiritual battles i could not find that spiritual connection and at the same time i had to be doing battle against the diabolic against malevolent forces against the forces of darkness against the satan and the children of darkness 
because there were some forces i tell you something in life you have some forces that are fighting you all the time you have forces against you all the time you know whether it's just wicked sinful evil people that just just want to see you disappear they just they just they they, they don't want to see you they were they prefer to see you dead they prefer to see you suffer they prefer to see you downtrodden because they're of their father the devil devil they are and the works of their father the devil so the so i was going to be that i i, I at one point in my spiritual journey when i wanted to when i was seeking the face of god so to speak you know i i i was seeking to find that relationship with my creator i was seeking to find that close connection to my creator i was seeking this i prayed i just i i i i did everything i could i got down on my knees every day but i just could not find this spiritual connection i was not feeling it and i ask father and i prayed and i say father only you can provide the answers father i pray and ask that you permit and allow the angels to reveal the answers to these questions i seek to find this higher level of awareness which is different from knowledge wisdom and understanding there is a higher level of awareness that one needs to attain in order to be able to walk in the way of the light for example i could tell you things and you may just understand them but the meaning meaning is what we lack many times and this is what i was lacking the meaning most people they they know they have a reason to do what they do they have a purpose to do what they do the most important thing is the meaning if you're doing things without meaning you're wasting your life you're wasting your time and you're wasting your soul and you as a consequence will also waste your eternity because you will fall in the flames of heat in eternal darkness and damnation forever this is a fact eternal damnation awaits how many times have you seen you know manifestations of your of people who were once or people who were once alive and every time you communicate and every time you they manifest and every time they communicate with you they always saying he's coming hide run they're always on the run even though they exist on the other side if they are souls that are found to be unworthy a hurt bound spirit is a hell bound spirit they will never ascend to the light in my previous programs i talk about souls that are cross over not all of us will stay in hell that is hell not all of us will stay there when we die some of us many are called but only few only few so i could not find that spiritual connection to my creator i abstained from eating certain because i was following biblical theology following the philosophical thinking of men not so you cannot find your way to god through a book you cannot find your way to god via some verses a book is a bunch of pages with ink on it you cannot find a spiritual connection through a book that book you walk around carrying in your hands thinking that you're smart you're wasting your time you cannot find god in a book you cannot find a spiritual connection through a book it has to be through you between you and your creator not the verses of a book whether it's the bible or the quran or the talmud or the torah or the tanakh you cannot find god through customs and practices it doesn't matter if you're a voodoo worker it doesn't matter if you would you do make the witchcraft and you jump around fire in your grass grass skirt it doesn't matter what ritualistic events you do or practices you do these ritualistic events they're just rituals of men they're just things that you put together in a construct and say we're going to do this and this and this at a certain time every day those are the rituals and the customs and the practice of men sacrificing animals to your god god what god would, they paint god as some depraved hungry power hungry monster sitting some part of the universe you know with a with on a golden throne with a crown on his head some groups out there they'll say that god has a big afro here 
he has got black skin and eyes of fire, you know, skin of brass, ear of wool, and they describe what their God is. They're defining their God. You can't define your Creator. You're wasting your time with all of this biblical babble. All of this biblical theology is all babble. 90% of the Bible is wrong. All the other religious books, 90%. The, the, Christianity only has 10%. Particularly Catholicism, because that's one branch of Christianity. All the other groups of the Abrahamic religions, I'm not talking about Islam, because Islam is an Abrahamic religion. But I'm talking about most of the monotheistic religions, because you've got the polytheistics and the, 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 the Muslims. You know, these are two that follow the monotheistic points of view in the one God concept. In fact, I wouldn't say Catholicism or Christianity, well, Catholicism in particular, is they believe in three gods, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're three different things, but they try to say it's three in one. I don't know how you get that, but that's ridiculous nonsense because they're defining their God. They're telling you who they are, what they are, and where they are. You, you can't define your creator. You're wasting your time. You're saying that you're monotheist, but you're a bunch of polytheists because you have various divinities of gods. God is various divinities in the various divine states, ghosts, and God knows what other divine states that they're defining their creator as. The Mormons believe that, you know, if I'm not mistaken, the Mormons are the Jehovah's Witness. One of them believe that there's a God in some corner of the universe and he's got, a, he's got two sons, one the devil and the other one Jesus. I think it's the Mormons. If I'm not mistaken, I stand corrected. They believe that, watch that cartoon, the Mormons cartoon, the band one. Who made that thing up if it's the Mormons or not? But anyway, I'll go with it. Apparently, they have some God. They believe that um, their God is in some planet somewhere. And that he have two sons, Jesus Christ and the devil. And both of them came to earth. And Jesus came to earth to save mankind from their sinful ways. And the devil came to break down whatever Jesus had built up. Jesus is trying to save and the devil is trying to destroy the souls of men. That's how their biblical, that's how their theology, that's the theological concept they have of God and the devil and hell and man and all that stuff. And uh, Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he went back to the planet of the apes or planet of the or whatever they're creating there and then he's now heading off with beautiful ladies around him virgins or some kind of I don't know they're all beautiful ladies or women with him heading off to another planet to create the planet of the apes or the planet of angels or the planet of man again uh, God knows our planet of gods maybe the planet of gods while the devil is stuck down here with us possessing most of us of their father the devil now at least that much I can believe in most of the people you see go by they, 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 they carry a lot of burdens with them, all this poison and hate. Every day they get up and all they have in their hearts is, I hate you, I dislike you, I don't like you, I don't like your face, I don't like your beard, I don't like your hair, I don't like your eye color, I don't like your skin color, I don't like your teeth. They don't like, like nothing. They get up and think people owe them something and you have to like them. He's not one of us. Oh, he's not a good old lad. He's not a lad. They, they, there's all these various things they will hate you for. If you dress a different way from them, they hate you. If you look a different way, you have people like that. They're everywhere in the world, all over the world, they're like that. More so in some places than others. I admire some of what the Muslims, they do. They have some very good practice, and they do try to be good. I can attest to that because I go around most of these people myself, I interview a lot of their imams, and I'm telling you that uh, they, they have some good practice, very admirable. I mean, you have to be devoted to the cause for you to get up out your bed five times a day to go to a particular place to worship and pray, show reverence and honor. You have to really be devoted. Even though they're misguided, it is easier to work with religious people than the unreligious people. Because the because the people who are not religious, they will find it difficult to, to be loyal or committed to the cause. When, especially when it comes to spiritual matters, yet alone to be disciplined in a particular way of life. Here at the way of the light, it's a way of life. In order for you to be righteous and holy, you have to be disciplined. You have to conform to a certain attitude of the mind, which will come out in your behavior towards others and yourself. Some people are self-loathing to the point where they will 
hate themselves to destruction. They get so big they can't even move under their own weight. They hate themselves so big. I'm not having a go at fat people. What I'm saying is that uh, you, 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 you have to look after number one. You've got to, you have to care about yourself. Oh, if you if you don't even care about your own self, but why would, why would you worry about your soul? My point is we have to do all we can. If we see that our portions are too much, we cut down. If we see that the type of food we're eating is making us put on too much weight, you cut down on the sugar, you cut down on the salt, and you cut down on the carbs, and you cut down on all that calorie, caloric intake. You cut down and stop blaming genes and stop blaming the government and stop blaming society and even although you may get a lot of money to, to dispose of in your own way it doesn't mean you go kill yourself with it why not put it to better use it's a bit like the gluttony of the churches they get all this contribution from the parishioners and all this help from the people and they glut they take the money and they they dispose of it in ways that are no good to nobody but themselves they build all these big castles or temples, they call churches and temples and monasteries and all that. These massive places cost millions of millions of pounds or dollars. And, and, and what do they do with it? They put a certain people there, them and their friends. The little poor people that's giving all this money to make the empire rise are not looked after. None of those people are looked after in the way at least they ought to, giving that they, they give all this money. And of course the church will say, well, it's not the people's money. We invest in banking, we invest in real estate, we invest in, 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 in companies, offshore companies, we invest in this bank, we invest in that. And all these institutions, they know are fraudulent. All these institutions are not righteous. They, 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 they're not good institutions because most of their money is questionable, to, the most of their attainments are questionable to say the least. Their dealings are questionable. It's not moral at all what most of these companies do. I'm not saying you can't do business with them because we have to do business with the devil. But what I'm saying is that you can't rely on the on, on sinful people. You've got to come up with a better way as opposed to just doing a deal with the devil all the time. Go and have a look at my other programs about what is the devil and so on and you get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. But just for the ease of conversation, I'll use his word. So the, 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 the second, the first resurrection, you cannot, and I repeat this, it is impossible for you to take part in the first resurrection, the first renewal, the first awareness. It is impossible for you to become aware through divine intervention. The first awareness, as I say, there are two types of awareness. The first of the three types of awareness, but we're dealing with two subcategories. Let me put it that way. In fact, I will combine the two, the first and second resurrection. So I'm dealing with the first and second resurrection, but there's two subcategories, as I say before, two types. And that is your connection with your Creator. You cannot become aware unless you make that connection. The second type of awareness is that you're aware that I'm talking to you now. You're listening to me and you're aware of what I'm saying. That's a different type of awareness. That's of the mortal kind. I'm talking an awareness of the spiritual. I'm talking awareness of the immortal kind. That's the first type of awareness. The second type of awareness, and I'm dealing with the three main ones, the, the two main ones now, not the subcategories. Now, the first type is the spiritual connection. You've got to have that. Otherwise, you're wasting your time because much of what you will experience is through divine intervention. For example, when I deal with the diabolic, I always get into trouble because you cannot fight the devil. You cannot fight evil yourself. So I ask Father to permit and allow the angels to do for me what I cannot do for myself. Because one thing you have to remember is that God is not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. For example, if I am hungry, I better go get that food to eat. If, if a car is out of control and it's coming your way and it's heading your way, you better get out of the way. No angel is going to swoop down from heaven and pick you up and say, I save you, my child. That those are very rare events, if at all they happen. Like that anyway. You, you, you see trouble coming, you, you better prepare for it. If you know something is about to happen or somebody is coming to, to do you something to kill you, 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 you better try to stay away from that person. You, you can't, the devil cannot have, you, have, you, have your left hand firmly gripped. 
while you're stretching out your right hand to God. You're wasting your time. God is not a rival to the devil. God is not a, because there's no comparison between the creator and, and the creation. So there's no rivalry there. No. God did not create them. And the, the scholastics and the ecclesiastical scholars, they had a lot of problems uh, because most of the Bible, the Torah, the Talmud, the Quran, and all those books that are out there are made up by it. It's just the concepts of men. And uh, for example, I give you an example. Uh, Abraham, I think it's the book of Joshua or Ezekiel, Isaiah, one of those books. Uh, Abraham was looking for God. Well, God wasn't lost, but he was looking to find God. He was lost. And when he went out to find God, he said the moon was God. And he said, it's in the Bible. You can, you can search for it. It's, it's there. And when he saw the moon, he said, well, that's God. And then he says, well, the sun is God. He lost his mind. And then he said the sun was God. And then he said, no, but God created his son, so the sun could not be God. You see, what he was doing is to try. He doesn't have a connection with God. It, it, the, none of these people in the Bible they write about had any connection with God because they went out looking for their God can't find him you need a spirit I was like them blind walking in darkness they have no spiritual connection to God and because they don't have a spiritual they, they, they're looking all the time and they're looking for God in something the moon the stars the sun where is God we can't find him as if God is lost. You're lost. You need to be found. And you need to find your way back. Or you need to find your way to God before you're lost forever. Meaning you die. It's after you die, you're lost for eternity. So the first and second resurrection. Uh, the f so we talk extensively about the first resurrection. And you cannot be holy unless you're righteous. You have to be righteous first. So in order to take part in the first I have any chance of communicating directly with God, having any chance of forming that umbilical connection to God, you've got to be righteous. Second, you've got to, you've got to be holy. I am not for turning. Your ways are not my ways, and my ways are not your ways. I walk in the way of the light, best I can. I strive to attain righteousness and holiness at the eyes. That's my lifestyle. It's a way of life. You've got to be disciplined and live to live this way. Got to be disciplined. There's no room for error. And I'm not for turning. So it is incumbent on all of us to try and strive to be good. Being good is, means to be righteous, to do the right thing. Do the good thing. That you know you're not supposed to do that. You know. For example, boogery. It's a form of boogery is, is sodomy. It doesn't matter if you do it with your wife or you do it with another man or, or so on. Most people think that this is okay. I hear people say it's okay. The pastors are doing it. Everybody's doing it. People will tell people that. They think a man doing it to his wife and not another man. Not. It's the same thing. And the spirits are watching you. Why you think, if you if you set up a camera in your house, you might see a lot of orbs flying around. They're there. All these things are watching you from the other side. They know what you're doing. They know your heart. They can read your mind. How do you think I telepath? How do you think I talk to these things without seeing what I'm talking to? I can attest to all. The, they can read your mind. You don't have to see them to talk to them. You can talk to them without moving your lips or saying a single word. If you can talk to them mind to mind, they can read your mind. I had one soul, I had one, what you call spirits, tell me she was tempting me. And she said, well, you're, you're, you're a righteous man. You're, you're a man of God. So think carefully before you do this. And that's, what, that's what she said to me. Think carefully, you're a man of God. They're watching you. They want to see if you practice what you preach. They want to see what cloth you're cut from. Is he the real deal? Or he's just faking it? Because we know the fakers. Oh, we test them all right and they all fail miserably. Every time we throw them a nugget, they just take it. Every time we cut them some slack and give them a new tail, they just run for it. They do anything. They do anything for a new skirt. So the second resurrection you cannot obtain, you cannot take part in the second resurrection. The second is the baptism of fire. 
because it mostly come the way I took part in it may be different from the way you will take part in it. Mine was a baptism of fire. I was battling, a, it was a titanic struggle between myself and a malevolent force, battling against the diabolic. And I am warning one and all right now, everyone, if you decide to start walking the way of righteousness and holiness, you are going to have to battle. You have, you're going to have to do battle against the diabolic. Evil spirits will come calling because they know you're getting away from them and that that is not going to go down easy with them. They're going to fight tooth and claw for you, for your soul. They will tempt you, they will tempt you in your dreams, they will tempt you in real life, and if you fail in your dreams, I am warning you all, you fail in real life. That is how it works, because the same way you're in life is the same way you're in death. That is why if you die, then you have had a bad spirit, a bad attitude of the mind. The same way you had a bad attitude towards others in your life when you were alive, is the same way you would have a bad attitude as a spirit of the dead. That is why some spirits give so much trouble, because they were bad people when they were alive. And they carry the same attitude. It's one of the only things we carry to the other side, is our attitude of the mind. Who we were will come out in our behavior towards others or to our own selves. The spirit there watching you, every move, everything you say, everything you think of, they can see your thoughts. They know you're corrupted and you're only faking it. You're only pretending. Every time you see that woman go by, you lost. Every time you see that man go by, you lost. And then you go home and God knows what you do after 12. Nobody's looking. You think you're alone. You're not. You go. They know. Can see you. And what you're doing. Every time you put on your robe and put on your costume and come out in the church and sing hallelujah. They know you're a faker. Every time you put on your tie and you go and talk about your preaching and teaching. I remember one one man was um, was testifying that it was and he said the spirit when he was he was in the hospital, all those people that he had killed unlawfully and wrongfully and knowingly and deliberately most of them, the works of their father, the devil they will do. You can't become good. You can't become bad. You you can be less bad. But you're bad anyway. <laughs> you can't become good. You, you can be less good. Now you take a good man and you put him in a bad situation. You'll suppress his goodness. Maybe he'll swear a few times. He gets very, very upset with you. But it doesn't mean he's bad. He's maybe just frustrated. And he'll become less good. But he's good anyway. Because, for example, you give him a million dollars and he gets out of that situation. He doesn't go to the club and hire a whole bunch of prostitutes. He doesn't do that. He says to the glory of God, and he gives his all to his fellow man. All that he can do with that money, he will give his best to help others. Unlike the wicked and the wretched, all he will do if he gets out of that position and gets a million dollars in his pocket, all he will do is just call a bunch of prostitutes and buy the Bentley and the Bugatti, drive around and show off on everybody else. That's what he will do. Oh, look at my shiny car. Look what I got and you ain't got none. Who is the king now? That's what he'll drive around and pretend like he's something great because he's got a little money in his pocket. But a good man will not do that. Even if he does have a bit of money, he will flash it around because it's not the way of the light. They, he's not a child of darkness. Those who are children of the light don't do that. It's the, the, the lifestyle is different. The way of life is different. The way of thinking is different attitude of the mind is different it, between them and the others come out in their attitude and their, their behavior towards others their actions towards others a good man will always be good you can know the righteous and holy they're not for turning even if they're in a bad situation you can take a good tree and put it in a bad patch of the woods I don't know, uh, somewhere where there's not much nutrients in the soil and whatnot, and it doesn't get to grow as good. But believe you me, when it does produce fruits, those fruits will be good. 
you take a bad tree and you put it in a good garden where there's fertilizer and all that artificial nonsense and you could boost it up all you want you could get it all that extra energy and you could boost it up all you want whatever that tree produce will be no good because the tree isn't the tree is no good how can the seeds be good how can the fruit be good if the tree is no good the second resurrection is walking in the way of the light so it's a continuous process every day you die a little every day you re you're reborn walking in the way of the light is the, it's like the phoenix every minute of the day you're being renewed you're being reborn okay. so for example we don't use uh, the, the, the one who walks in the way of the light won't see humor as a virtue because they would have known better for example many things we do and many things we don't we don't do. uh, giving jokes and being humorous uh, being humorous and especially when you take it too far it's a dangerous thing i'll give you an example you you call a man mr head you just call somebody a nickname head and if you like and i'm telling you just by calling that man that you're trying to be humorous you're trying to make a joke you're trying to be playful and whatnot but you by just doing that i warn you all just to stop it right there there's three stages to this before it gets out of hand you call a man oh mr head just stop it there because the next thing you're gonna do stage two is to start to conjure it up in your mind what Eddie is stage three you, you're gonna start conjuring up in your mind all the things that can come out of a head and before you know it you end up going too far it's it's inevitable that this humor won't turn into something else that this that this is a joke you're trying to pull off won't turn into something else just by saying mr head already a lot of people be listening to this program conjuring up in their minds all kind of heads and they'll be laughing to themselves or, or laughing with each other and, and they'll be chatting and maybe even start to talk about heads now and that before you know it it gets out of hand and there's all kind of other things to this head that they'll be talking about and all kind of things a bit of what doing to this head and all the all kind of the, their imagination will be running wild this is what i'm talking about i learned the hard way because i went I, I, I myself, that humor was not a virtue. Humor was not a good thing. Especially for those who want to walk in the way of the light. It was not a good thing. And I only say this for your learning. You see, I'm putting myself out there on the line, tipping the scales a bit, just for you to understand better what I'm talking about. I'm not interested in, in, in your jokes or interested in, in your humor. It, it doesn't mean that you can't have humor or be, you know or make a bit of joke but what it does mean is that there are three stages to it and realizing the stages to it mean you can you can stop you can stop it from spiraling out of control that's all i'm trying to say so stage one you call you 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 say to somebody mr head or call the man oh mr head stop it right there you stop it at stage one because stage two and three, it's on. It's, it's going to get out of control. You're not going to be able to control it at all, and you just end up sinning. And, you, and that is the when I, I did another program about sin. You know, check out my YouTube channel and look for the program Sin. In in the discussion Sin, I mentioned that you only pray for 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 the forgiveness of sins, your sins, when you have deliberately, knowingly, and woefully done it. That's the only time you pray for sin. You, you can pray for sin whenever you want, but it's pointless praying for sin because you're, it's inevitable. You're supposed to sin. But to learn more about that, why don't you check out my other programs? So the second resurrection, remember the first, the first that there's two awareness. There's three awareness, but there's two subcategories of awareness. So the, se the first, awareness which is the first resurrection first awareness there's two awareness the two subcategories to that and then you have the second awareness now the second awareness is walking in the way it's a continuous process it's a lifestyle it means you're renewed every day you're reborn 
you're continuously walking in the way of the light constantly day by day guided by the angels as you take your baby steps in forming that strong and stronger connection to your creator forming that close and closer relationship to your creator it's a process it's a lifestyle it's a way of life every day you have to walk in the way of righteousness and holiness that's the second resurrection every day you're resurrected again from your dead state because it sin is inevitable you're going to sin it's a bit like taking part in baptism but then you go and you wash off your clothes and you have to do the same thing you've been doing before you got baptized why you think you got baptized to wash your sins away that's the concept that's the idea so if you go on continuous sinning then you're defeating the objective what's the point being baptized then your sin won't be washed away because you won't be renewed you won't be a no man or no woman so you'd be wasting your time you'd be wasting your soul you'd be wasting your life and you'd be wasting your eternity because you're going to spend it in a place where you really don't want it so the second resurrection is walking in the way of the light throughout your life's journey and hope and pray asking father to permit and allow the angels to guide you along your life's journey throughout your life's journey guide you in the way of the light so that you walk in the path of righteousness and holiness continuously striving to be good striving to be righteous and holy so that you can find favor in the eyes of god after the end of your life when your life comes to an end and you cross the river so to speak there is a third resurrection but more about that will be our next discussion i appreciate all your subscription i appreciate all your support to the, to the ministry i appreciate your donations and and your charitable givings i appreciate all that and i appreciate uh um, all those who want to join the ministry and all those who have joined the ministry i hope what i've said that uh, shed some light is that it's that your righteous and holy are forsaken it's high time that we look after good people and we look after the righteous and holy among us this clash of the titans there is a battle coming scrolling down by checking out our other packages which you can find in this section down here and you can click on our patreon page today we're going to look at three groups of people good looking people average looking people and not so good looking people and ask the question which one of these group of people are most likely to find favor in the eyes of god so let's begin are good looking people less likely to find favor in the eyes of god the average man less likely to find favor in the eyes of god or those we consider less good looking can they find favor in the eyes of god when discussing this topic there's two main things to consider one the trees you come from i'm using a metaphor here your parents your family lineage and two your default position who you are inside so first let's look at the trees you come from meaning your family your father mother and your family lineage now your family tree has a lot to do with it the reason why is this if you have whole generations of people who think a certain way for example there are gamblers uh there are serial predators there are warmongers uh you have a whole family of people who are judges or lawyers or doctors or teachers chances are that children will not only aspire to be like the parent but they will also you could say it runs in the blood they may also want to do the same things like their parent now it's the same thing with your spirituality and it's the same thing with who you are and who you most likely to become so for example if you had a parent if you if your mother and father were civil servants let's say they were judges if both parents were judges chances are they have what you call a thing for law it kind of runs in the blood it runs in the family chances are that ch the children they produce will almost certainly follow in that trend will almost certainly be like them if especially if both parents are the same like minded because one of the only reason why people will come together people like that will come together is that they're both like-minded so they want to be around like-minded people so people who are 
lawyers and doctors and judges and teachers and politicians and soldiers and policemen and so on mostly talking about the civil servants here they're most likely to be around people or that way inclined and are most likely to marry into those family and produce the next generation of public servants now now if that's the case you you can also see where i'm going with this conversation that they are also most likely to follow in the footsteps of their parents. So most of these people I'm describing, 99% of them are almost certainly ungodly people. They have no God in them. Most of these people want nothing to do with God, even if they put on a bit of face and go to church on Sunday to God. So that's, that's, that's an example of traits and, and family lineage, the way things will follow. It's the same thing, it's the, it's the very same thing with looks. So the way you look will determine your character, your attitude. 99% of the time you'll find that good looking people, they're outgoing, they're outspoken, they talk a lot, they talk a lot of things they don't know nothing about as well, but they tend to talk a lot, they're always at the front of everything, and they think they know it all, and they always have a big mouth. because. They don't have much to worry about in the way of, will I be accepted in society? Will I be ex accepted by others? Everybody seems to like them. They're always popular. Everywhere they go, everybody just warm to them because they're easy on the eyes. We have to, you know, these are, these are facts. You know, good looking people are just that. They're just easy on the eyes and they're just easy to deal with. They, you know, they, they're always popular, right? It's just a fact. But being popular and being easy on the eyes doesn't mean you're going to be easy on the eyes to the devil or you're going to be easy down there in hell. Because one of the big disadvantages, it does have its advantage being very easy on the eyes or what you call beautiful and easy to look at. Uh, you know, the problem they have is that because 99% they, they, of the time, it's only they live off their emotions, they live off their confidence, they live off their looks. It means everything to them. And as a consequence, they become very vain. As a consequence, they ignore. Uh, it comes at the expense of their souls. They ignore righteousness and holiness. As a consequence, they want nothing to do with God because they have the world at their feet. They have the world looking at them. They have the world adoring them. They have society loves them. Everybody smiles with them. Everybody looks favorably upon them. If they want to go marry into a family, it's always yes, it's never no. You will never find a very beautiful woman wants to marry into a family. And most people say no. They will always say, oh, you know, she's beautiful. Yes, we'll welcome her any day. But you get a woman the opposite to that. And everybody turns the back and not the face. Almost certainly you'll get that reaction. She'll have to fight her way or, or she, she'll have to claw her way into that family. She'll have to fight tooth and claw. Uh, there'll be a lot of reservation. There, there'll be a lot of back, you know, backstabbing and back talking and bad talking, and uh, th th there'll be just a lot of resentment. If worse, if she doesn't look uh, the average, and she looks less than the average, there'll be a lot of reservations there. Put it that way, to say the least. Especially if she wants to get into a family of good-looking people in the first place. She she don't need, she don't she wouldn't even have to it's not only tooth and claw she'll have to fight her way in there but she'll have to use some other improvisions as well poison and all she'll have to improvise and use a lot more other deadly weapons yeah, just to work her way up to the top yeah, or work her way up in that family if she really wants to stay there because they, you know there'll be resentment from every corner how did you marry such a ugly woman how did you you know there'll be a lot of it's just the way society is. They always prefer the better looking people, particularly if they're of lighter complexion. It's, it's just the way people are. And that's a fact. And there's no two way about it either. You, you can think of it what you like, but it's a fact. Those that don't, you know, prefer these traits, they're less than average looking themselves. That's a fact too. All of those people that will tell you I don't want a beautiful woman in my family or a handsome man, they're less than handsome themselves. They're less than good looking. They're not of the average type, but that's a fact. Uh, you know, there's no way you're going to tell me you, you do not want 
somebody that looks better than you you want somebody to look worse than you so if you if you're of that if you're that way inclined and you have that mindset then maybe all of your generation is just looking less than you uh, less better than you that aside we'll we'll come to them in a minute so most of these good looking people will they ever find favor in the eyes of god more than those who are average or less good looking the ones who are most good looking are in the most trouble and i say this because they they have a less chance of finding a favor in the eyes of God by virtue of their birth. Most of them, as a default position, they have very little to worry about. Flowing nice here. You know, when one say you're you're perfect, you know, when one say, well, that person is just stunning. It means your hair is beautiful, your skin is beautiful, you're, 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 the whole, you, you have nothing to worry about. So when I talk about being beautiful, I'm talking the whole package. You, you come with the, the whole lot. You, you got it all kind of thing. So those people are almost certainly in trouble because they will find it very difficult to stay in the straight and narrow. You know, there are a lot of perks to being beautiful and look good and being handsome, but it comes a little, it comes a little of pride. You, you, you always snob but people. You always think you're better than everybody else. You, you, you don't want to be talked to or talked down at. You, you don't want to be talked to at all. You you think you 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 should you you deserve everything good, you think the world owes you something, you think you deserve it, you think people when when you pass people have to to look favorably upon you, smile, and if they don't you you feel and if they don't you feel hurt, your pride gets hurt more than the man who wasn't expecting all that at all, because he knows he ain't all that, so he's not expecting all that. But the one who thinks he's, you know, so beautiful, the world should fall at his feet. He's vain. He's always picking his eyebrows. He's always, uh, he's weary, always putting makeup on his skin when he doesn't need to. The best of the best. And this becomes his world. His pride and his look becomes his God. And he lives and he's trapped and he's shackled firmly to that world. The world of his darkness. The world of his own making the world of his delusion, the world of his illusion. He deserves it. He must get that. If you take a very handsome man and put him in a, a battered up old vehicle, he doesn't feel comfortable. You think he has to get into the, the brand new car or the nice car. He doesn't think he should be in the old shack down the road, that old house that is about to fall down. If he wants a house, he wants the best one. If he wants a wife, wife he wants the, the be most beautiful wife. Uh, he think he, he owns, he think he deserves it. And society also thinks so too. If they see a, a very handsome man struggling or suffering, society think, well, you know, he don't deserve it. Uh, well, you know, he shouldn't really suffer like that. Look at this guy. He has potential. He can be better. But if you see a man who looks rough and less than average, you don't think he has any potential. And you definitely don't think he can do better at all. But if you see a man that looks m better than average, what you'd say flawless and have the full package, you know, perfectly beautiful and so on. Then you would think that that man can do better. Then you think that man have potential. Then you want to put him at the front desk. Then you want to put him, you want to put him like a, a brand new shiny car in, in, in the car showroom. You leave the second hand cars at the back and the, the less than, and the less than average one you want to send him at the, or at the scrapyard. So that is how you will almost certainly perceive people who are very good looking, whether it's a beautiful woman or a very, very handsome man. So it, it's, it's just a fact of life. And every society, every people will do that. You go to the Amazon jungle and you bring this very fair skin complexion, uh, you, you know, blue eyes, blonde, whatever they call beautiful here. And, 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 and most people will, will think that, okay, all right, he's different from us and he's got some potential. Uh, you bring somebody that looks like them, they're not only ready to fight him, but they're ready to put him on the scrap heap. They're ready to put him at the back of the class. They're ready to, they're ready to call his name loss because to them he's just average. To them he's just, he's just another black person. He's just another white person. He's just another red person. He's just another yellow person. They don't, they don't look favorably. They, they don't think anything special about him. He's just one of us. But if he looks a bit different from you, especially if he is he's of a lighter, very lighter complexion. You, you, you have a lot of people out there who, who, who deny that there is any such thing as black 
or, or black color who denies their own color, uh, thinking that there's some other color. You, you, you know, you have people out there, you, you, you know, who deny, who deny knowing each other because they, they just don't cut it. They, you know, you, you introduce your, your beautiful wife to your, your, to your family and you're worried about some men. They, they, they don't even want to introduce, you know, their wife and, and kids to some of their family members because some of them just don't cut it. Some of them look rough. They fall in up hard times you know some of them don't speak well they're not well spoken and 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 you know some people you, you just don't want to engage with them so what i'm trying to say is the more flawless you are whether you you speak flawlessly or you look flawless you know whether you're perfect in it i'm talking about the whole package you're most likely to be accepted you're, you're less likely to be frowned upon the people less likely to turn their backs to you you're you're most likely to get the attention of of, of, of many people as opposed to if you're just average looking or or you're less than average looking is what I'm trying to say but for those people the vanity creeps in the vainness of man creeps in they're the ones who are plucking the eyebrows they're the ones who are you have a lot of feminine characteristics because they, they want to be they want to outshine everybody and they think they they constantly have to outshine everybody and they think they're entitled to everything uh, if you go back to the story of the Bible with Lucifer what was he? The, he was the morning star. He was the shiniest of the shiniest. They describe him far more luminous and glorious than every other angel. And what happened to him? Gets to his head. Now he wants to be God. Being beautiful and perfect wasn't good enough for him. Now he, he, he wants to, he wants more than that. And he think he was entitled to the throne. He think he was entitled to be God. And that's the problem when you give one person, when one person has too much or the whole package the more they have is the worse they become the better they look is the more sinful and ungodly and abominable they are it's the more experiment with themselves they try to do is is the more sodomizing their ways are is the more fornication they will do is the more adultery they'll practice is the more boogery and all the other abominable things of man is the more is the more drugs they will take is the more they will drink and laugh and show off and socialize is the more club and party they will go they are always the talk of the town uh, you know they are always the the star of the show whenever they walk in everybody is silent all the less than average people eat last all the less than average people sit last he is always first he think he's entitled to everything he think everybody owe him something and he think he is greater and he's the greatest and he's the one until he falls like lucifer and 99 percent of them will end up in that way because they always think they're entitled to everything he doesn't want to be seen in a battered up old car you think he's better than that and society also thinks so too you will have, you will have a lot of women they will say he doesn't dress well and he looks so good he has such a good body you know most women will say that he has such a good body i don't even want to talk like that tell the truth most women will say he has such a good body and he shouldn't dress like that because he's he's so handsome and he, he has a full package and, and 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 even society will agree i'm telling you if you see a very very handsome man falling on hard times and you have a daughter most men would say listen I'll, you know i'll help you brother help me out here you know i need some good look in this family too you know uh, you, you have potential it's the same thing it's like if you see a big strong man and you are working the fields you see a big strong man and a skinny man uh, you you more gravitate to the big strong man who can help you out in the fields if that's what you're doing or you're lifting boxes <laughs> it, it depends on your or you may be involved in a business that needs a lot of muscle power uh, you will always gravitate to the, the one that can help you the most if you have less than average looking people in your family or your daughter is less than average looking then you may want her aspire you may want her to aspire to marry someone and have kids for somebody who is better looking than her who can kind of bring things up a little bit you know who can balance things out a bit so to speak it's just it's, look if you look if you're dirt poor uh, you may be you may want a man that has a bit of money um and just to say or anything that if you're dirt poor that you may want to aspire to to, to be better than what you are or if you're less than average looking you may want to pick up a man that you, you know maybe can balance things out a bit in your favor you, you if you have a if you have a, a company you may want to put somebody at the front who knows what he's talking about 
and maybe look the part as well. And they will look at that woman who's, who's less better looking than there, and they will instantly start judging that woman, that, that woman that's interviewing them. Uh, who do you think you are? I'm better looking than you. And you, you turn on my application, you know? So they will feel entitled to than the, than the man or woman that doesn't go there expecting anything because they know they're not looked upon in that way. So an average man or, an, or a less average looking man will not go to a job interview believing that, you know, he's entitled to it because the person that might be doing the interview might be better looking than him and might be more intelligent than him. So he'll go there and humble himself. But the, the, the man that looks more handsome than the man who is interviewing him, he might be thinking, I should be in your position. I should have your job. Because he always feel entitled. He always feel like, oh, you to turn me down. And you're better looking, than, you're, you're less better looking than me. Or you have less money than me. It's like a rich man. A rich, if a rich man gets, gets turned down by a poor man, he feels very hurt. Because he, 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 it's the same principle. He thinks that, who are you to turn me down? I'm richer than you. Who are you to talk to me? Who are you, who are you to talk up to me? Who are you to challenge me? Who are you to, to give me your opinion? He will always think that he is entitled to something because he's rich. It's the same principle. So what I'm trying to state here are statements of fact. We may, it may hurt some people. Some people may not like that kind of gesture. Some people may not like this kind of conversation. But it is true. There are people that are just easy on the eyes. There are others that are not. And that's a fact. You know, you know, some people, they always look angry. Some people, their eyes are always red and looking like they just wake up. Or they, like, they were smoking. And it's not necessarily so. But it's just, some people always look tired in the face. Uh, some people just always look fresh and green and, and smiley. It's just the way you come across. It doesn't mean that you're bad or good, or but it's just the way you project to the world. It's just the way you come across to people. Some people don't smile at all. They see nothing to smile for. But there are others that just have always have a friendly smile. And those people get on with others better. They're more popular. They're more outgoing. So I'm just making statements of facts here. And of course, if you're, if you're less than average looking, you're going to always want to look for somebody that can balance things out a bit, you know, with you so you, you, and your offspring. So you, you're going to try and improve things a bit. And it's the same thing. But the only problem, so there are, there are pros and cons. There are, they, they, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages to the men or women that looks really nice and have the full package. Uh, there, there are disadvantages that they're vain. They're almost certainly going to be vain. And as a result of which, they will never form that spiritual umbilical connection to their creator. And that is a fact. You, you go out there, you look out there at the average man and woman. Most of the beautiful people, they're all ungodly, sinful people. Uh, most of them. Whether you see them in the clubs or you see them just go by. They're always the one that wants to go out and dress up nice, the vain. They're, they never want to cook and, like the average woman. They don't want to breastfeed. You know, it will, it will, it will mess up their breasts. They don't, want to, they don't want to do a lot of things the average woman will do or the less than average woman will do. They don't want to cook. They don't want to clean. They, they, they're just ungodly and uh, fake. Most of them are ungodly, fake, and it's not the type of woman you really would want. Because if you're going to only pick a woman because she's beautiful, you're going to pick a woman for the wrong reason. Because all you end up producing is a bunch of devils like, the wom like, like that beautiful woman. They're sinful, ungodly people for the most part. I'm not saying that they, they're the type of people that will run you down with a machete or a gun. I'm not saying that. What I'm talking about is, is sinfulness. They're the most likely not to find favor in the eyes of God. And that, my friends, is a fact. That's a, they're, they're, they're the least likely one to, to be seeking a connection to God. They're the least likely one. They're so preoccupied with the things of this world and themselves and their own success and their own self-gratification. They have no time for God. Most of those good-looking people, men and women. Now, let's talk about the average. Now, what's of them? Now, the average Joe, man and, average man and woman, they're in the same category. They're so busy chasing their dreams every day in, day out. They're so busy working for those who are better looking than them. 
because most of the people with all the money, they always marry good looking women and good looking men. So you find that most of the good looking ones are at the top anyway. <laughs> so to speak, most of the good looking ones, they will always somehow wh whisked off by some rich man or some rich woman who will want a good looking man or some rich m man will be looking for a good looking woman uh, and so on. So they will, they, they, they will most likely you'll find those ones at the top and they're the most ungodly of them all. But anyway, so the average man is kind of in the same boat because he's always chasing after his dreams and he's always following after the better looking people, after the richer people than himself, after the better off than himself, always working for the man that is better than him. So he's also in that dire straits where he's always chasing after things that he'll never be and never get. Right, and he'll be, he'll always be working for those who are better than him, and that's all he'll ever do. So, and and the ones who are better than him create a system where they preoccupy all his time for his entire life, just working for them. And what I mean by that is, how long you think you'll, you 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 know, you get to pay off for your mortgage? You buy a house for five hundred thousand pounds or four hundred thousand pounds. You're taking thirty five, forty years to pay off for that. In some cases, maybe fifty years, depending on how much you're earning. You may take 35, 40, 50 years to pay off for that. That's all your life. You're lucky if you live to 50, most of you. Most people are lucky if they get to 50, yet alone 70. And even if you do get to 70, the little 20 years you have will be living in pain and agony and misery and screaming and crying and crawling every day for pain and all bits of you falling off every minute. <laughs> all part of you not working and this part is not working. Keeping after changing your starter motor, you're keeping after look at the old ticker. The engine is leaking oil. The gasket is gone. The mole head lights are all busted. You have to wear, you, you, you know, you have to put on goggles or glasses or whatever you put on these days. I'm just saying that you spend your whole life working for those who are better than you, trying to be like them, and you spend 30, 40 years paying off for a mortgage, working every day God send just to pay off for that house. And by the time you reach 50, you have 20 more years to go. For example, you have 10 more or 20 more years to live or 10 more years if you're lucky. And that 10 year will be spent living like a, living like one, like, like someone in a care home. By then, by the time you pay off for the house, you need looking after. You're finished anyway. So you spend your whole life just to get to the point where you're finished. And now all you're doing is waiting to die in pain and agony and all kind of bits and pieces of you falling off. Every time you take two steps, something goes wrong. You, you, you know, you're short circuiting everywhere, like an old robot. Um, you know, batteries all busted. You, you, you know, you, can't, you can hardly move under your own weight. You can hardly drag that old carcass around. So the average man is in the same boat, pretty much. The, the ones who are better looking than him and have more money than him and better off than him, and they're mostly at the top. These ones create a system where they they enslave him who always trying to be like them at the top. So he's working all his life to pay off for this house that he can never pay off. By the time he pay off for it, he's just ready to die. Just ready to go to sleep permanently for one last time. So he's pretty much wasting his time too, thinking that he's one of them. Or he can be like one of them. You can't be like them. You're just average and that's it. Don't worry about it. You'd be better off spending your time worried about your soul. So he's, he's, his old, most of his whole life, 99% of, of the average man is meaningless anyway. Has no meaning. By the end of it all, he's just waiting to die, just like the rest. So what's of the less average looking people? Well, the less average looking people, they definitely is in a quagmire. They're like in a marshland. They're, 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 they're in waters up to their knees. They can, they can neither go or come. So most of those will also try to get out of it that sticky situation they're in. And they will always try to be like the average man or better than the average man. So it's a, it's a real struggle for them. And they can't find much people to get them out of it because they're, they're less than better looking. You know, you, you don't have much f men throwing their daughters at him or women or women throwing themselves at him because he pretty much has nothing to offer. And what he has to offer, you can get it elsewhere and more. You can get it with money too. So the thing about him is that he's in, he's in a real bad, he's in a sticky situation. But will that make him a little bit more godly? It is the question. And you will find that 
you know, when you're, you know, up to your knees in, in, in mud, when you're stuck in that sticky situation, most of people in that situation are, are the most religious you find among us. The average church goer, they are broke. Most of these people will go to church. They go to church because, listen, they, they fail in, life failed them. Most people go to church, just they, they, life just wasn't appealing to them for one reason or the other. They, they, first of all, most of them couldn't compete because it wasn't in their nature. And they didn't want to compete, most of them. Most, the less average looking people, they don't really want to compete. They don't have that competitive spirit. They don't want to be outgoing and loud and braggadocious. They don't want to be bragging. And they're all, they're most likely to be humbler people. And as a consequence, they're most likely to find that peace and tranquility in life. Yes, their lives are hard, but this is where they rely on God more for their strength, for their redemption, for their salvation, for their, for, as their helper. Uh, you know, they, they, they mostly look up from whence come their salvation. Uh, they, they're, 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 these are people who are always uh, th seeing life as just a stepping stone to something greater. These are the people that take their time and look at what all the worldly attainments will, will achieve. And most of the time, they will see beyond the horizon. They see beyond the tip of their nose. Most of the time. Yes, they may be poorer than the average man. They may be poorer than the rich people. Yes, that is true. They may even be less better looking. That is true. But they almost certainly will have more God in them. And that's the fact. The fact is that most of these people, um, when I say most, I'm talking about 60%. 40% will be lost, that's true. But about 60% of them, 55 to 60%, they're not much more than the average and, and those at the top. But about 55 to 60% of them, you get about 10% more that will gravitate more towards a spiritual enlightenment. They will more gravitate more towards, they'll be more spiritually inclined because they look up to heaven for, 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 for their help because they, they can't get it down here. So they see the world as a real bad place for them. I mean, when you're in the quagmire, when you're in the mud deep up to your knees or up to your neck, you really have to see God. You really have to be more spiritually inclined. You really have to be more spiritually connected to a higher power than man. And hence you find that these people, their children also is somewhat spiritually, in, is the same way spiritually inclined. You find that them and their old generations will be more church going people, will be more godly people, will be more and most likely to be righteous people. Even if you do get, you, you'll have maybe one or two members of a family, you know, of an average family. One or two of them, you know, may become churchgoers, as opposed to most of the rich people where, where you have whole generations and none of them ever want, want to go to church. Whole generations of them have nothing to do with God and God have nothing to do with them. In the average family, you may have one or two, maybe maybe one if you're lucky, that is serious about their spiritual salvation, their spiritual health. In poorer families, you find that most of the time they look to heaven. They look to a greater, higher power for their salvation because they know that down here there's no deliverance for them. It's all shackles, hardship and pain and suffering. So most of the time you'll find that they're more spiritually inclined and more godly. Now some people say to me, so what about countries that, that, you know, that, that economically doing very bad and, 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 and very poor? And most of those people are not, not godly and they're very poor. Most people say that. What you have to understand, and that's why I say to you, I said 55 to 60 percent is no more than about five or 10 percent extra, you know, that you will get because most poor people will always be thinking about riches. And that's what they will be doing all their life, thinking about money. So there's no real much difference between, you know, those who are less than average looking and those who are better than better looking than themselves, the average, and those who are better than average looking. There's no real much difference between those three groups. But the thing is that they, 
the more oppressed and suppressed, the more you feel like you know you 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 had a bad start. Is the more you're really going to be more humble and try to seek salvation. You're going to try to seek your strength. You're going to try to seek you know your help from a higher source. But at least I can have eternal life. Look at it that way. I mean, there's no point me fighting about this life and worldly attainment. Because even if I did achieve all that, and it's unlikely, but even if I did, I'm going to lose my soul anyway. Now, I can't achieve any of that. So why not at least I try to achieve eternal life and salvation? So most, most reasonable-minded people look and say, this world will fail me whether I succeed in it or not. I'll end up losing my soul, much like the average and much like, much like the better than average. So what do I have to lose? Nothing. You know, I have nothing to lose. I have no riches to lose. And I don't have a beautiful face that will burn off in the lake of fire. So what have I got to lose? You know, most of them, 5 or 10%, maybe 20% of them who fall in the 1%, the few, maybe 20% of those will come because they want to escape fire. And the alternative was worse. You know, having a rich life and then end up in fire, it was worse. So most of them will look at it in that way and say, what am I to lose? Nothing. And then you will have the 1% that really came for, for the right reason. They came because they want to. They came expecting nothing. They came as they were, without one plea. They came as they were, rich or poor, bond or free. They came of their own free will. They came because they were chosen by virtue of their default position. They were good people anyway. They were from good tree. They were cut from good cloth. They were among Father's chosen few in the first place. By sheer virtue of their default position, within them they were good seeds. You can take a bad man and you can put him in a good situation and he will all he will be less bad. He is bad anyway. But you take a good man and you put him in a bad situation, he can be a little he can be less good. But overall he's good anyway. If you give him a million dollars, he will always try to do the best for others. If you give a bad man a million dollars, he will always think about champagne, luxury car, prostitutes and a big home. That, that is all you'll gravitate to. Absolute useless. But you give a million dollars to a good, righteous and holy man, he will think about doing good to others with that money for as long as he can until he crossed the river, so to speak, until his last day. He will try to be good. And that's the difference between a good man, righteous and holy man, and a bad and a sinful person. The sinful one will think about champagne, prostitutes and cards. You give him a million dollars. But you give a righteous and holy man a million dollars or a million pounds, you will think about doing something good for the benefit of others. Yes, it's easily said than done, and we can all get corrupted because money can corrupt you. But still, you have a better chance of that righteous and holy man doing what is just and, 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 and proper with that million pounds than that ungodly sinner that you give him a million dollars and all he will think about is rock music champagne prostitutes and cars that that's all he will then and, and all the sinful things of this life and that's a fact i think we can all agree on that so are good looking people men and women in trouble yes they are is the average man and woman in trouble looking man and woman in trouble yes they are too because they're always chasing the money. And what about the less than average looking man and woman? Well, they're in a very sticky situation. They're in mud all the way up to their necks. And they're in a deep, deep, deep sinkhole, a sticky, sticky situation. But they're most likely to look up from whence cometh their salvation. They're most likely to form that spiritual connection to their creator. They're most likely to be the godly, righteous, and holy among us. Yes, there may be few, because as I say, you know, a lot of countries are very poor. Millions and millions of those people there, they're not righteous and holy, and they're poor. But that aside, at least an extra 5 to 10% of those will be more spiritual, 
and have a better chance of forming that spiritual umbilical connection to their creator than the average looking person or those who are considered very, very good looking or pretty. So we can conclude from today's discussion that it stands the reason to believe and all the evidence points to the fact that the less than average looking people are most likely, even although they have lots of disadvantages in life, but they, but the one thing they have going for them is that they will receive some of them at least, many are called, only few, only few, but more of them will receive eternal life, you know, if they stay the course and and not give up their salvation for worldly attainments or to try and achieve worldly attainments because even if they do achieve that they will still lose their souls just like the others so if they can follow the way of the light and continue to walk in the way of righteousness and holiness they the one percent the few will make it and with that i would like to close by saying may the good grace of a creator be with us and bless us always thank you all for your support thank you all for your subscription thank you all for listening and we welcome one and all to the ministry. Uh, why not give me a call or send me a message? Why not drop me an email or send me a voice message? And we will read it out and discuss it in the next program. I hope you all can join me in the next program. Well, quick and easy. Tap the channel name PGTL101, enter, and or you will see a list of our videos down here. Don't listen. Just listening. Do it. See what they say. the pastors, the bishop, you have to find that connection to you. Hi everyone. Today, you put a lot of strain in you. Well, today I'm going to show you how to oh. use these are I'm dealing with Catholics. I'm going to deal with all of them one by one. This video editing tool. Other videos. If you want to check out my other videos on YouTube about it, let's get right into it. We're gonna. This will also appear. At the, the imams, the rabbis, the pastors. The mental faculty. The video editing tools. It's all these stuff. Media, we have your audio, we have your text. Go through a global ice age. Science has basically entered into a crisis. Being told to us by scientists. The features here. So let's focus on this side first. Here we Yeah, you know, pass that thing on the road and think it's, uh, you know, it's just good work. Oh, you're... <laughs> you're good. So here we have your media. Oh, yeah. Because there is a metaphysical impossibility. that in my other videos and also how to record your desktop create professional fun and exciting videos to your audience in subsequent podcasts the, the imams the rabbi the pastors the bishop you the videos let's run through a few of the features oh, on the arms and, and the neck and you put it in a nice pair of right. you know, shoes and a three-piece suit and a shape of course then they tell us well now we're going to global warming <laughs> a 
mean, you can't define what God is. Oh. Because just to listen to this kind of thing. Do you agree that the priest can't help you? That didn't work, so now the town is now rising. Today. I'm dealing with Protestant and I'm dealing with the Muslims and the Jews and all the others in subsequent podcasts. And many, many more things. So why not click the whole subscription button if you don't. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with all of them one by one. Your devotion to a piece of bread is not gonna help you. you this way and return back to the part of righteousness and holiness and if you gotta create man and, and creation oh okay. you got it so we're guys you're wasting your time and form that strong spiritual umbilical connection to your creator is something you want to have to have. The death and to define a thing is a philosophical endeavor. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you, you know, you shave it up yeah, nicely okay, and yeah. get all out of that here. And, and forming your relationship or devotion to a piece of bread is not going to help you. You're wasting your time. You have to find that connection to your creator for uh, So why don't you check out that video now? Why not drop us a comment? You know, to that old notification bell and so is philosophy. I've done my best, I can do no more, but I'll keep trying. See the story after this. Oh, the Quran that's... is only in Arabic. You the, won't get it. Still, you see, there's dots. All these dots, they, they got a meaning. They, yeah. they took 300 copies of the Quran all across the world from east to west and to see if there's been any changes. Not a single dot has changed. That's, that's good. At least, yes. At least it's not following the Bible. Yeah. Uh, what's his name now? Philip. Philip is a newborn Christian. Right? And he said to me, Muhammad, you, you should believe in the, in, in, in the Bible. He said, well, of course I believe in the Bible. I believe in the Bible in its original form. I'm like, are you going to tell us? You're going to tell us? Are you come in the right place. Come, come, come. The door is open so you can come in. Now, no, I have to go to the chin. Yeah. You have to believe in the oneness of God. Yeah. All the messengers from Adam to okay. Muhammad. And he's the final messenger. Okay, okay. So we believe in David, we believe in Jesus, David, all the Moses, God. all the messengers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> you have any questions? That's what you have to believe in all the books. Yeah. We believe in the oneness of God and the Prophet, all the prophets, yeah. Prophet Muhammad being the final messenger. And we believe in all the angels, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the books, yeah. the books of, of the Christian, the books of the Jews in its original form. Before it says in the Quran somewhere yeah, that you can, you can when, you, when you are praying, you should not be smelling of alcohol. That means you were allowed to drink. Yeah, yeah. You were allowed to drink, but when you are praying, you should not drink smell. Yeah, yeah. True. Now you have five times prayer. How do you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We used to be five times before. We still. It's, it's, always, it's five always been five times. So the difference between the Quran and the Yeti. Right. Because in the Quran, it says pray. But it doesn't say how many. It doesn't say how to pray. Same for giving zakat. That, that the condition yeah, that, that we give to the poor. Yeah, yeah. It says to give zakat in the Quran, but it doesn't say who to give and how much to give. All right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's when the that, that's when the hadith comes into it. So the, 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 the teaching of, of the Prophet from, Muhammad. Oh, oh. Because what he used to tell, so he used from to that, do. he deduced from whatever from that was written in the Quran that yes. this is really. Yeah. We, we, we're going to make it a bit more structured. Yeah, we can explain a bit more yeah, in detail. We'll put yeah. it in context a bit more. Because now you have, you have a group that's it. So who wrote the Hadith itself? Hadith was 
Say for example, you are listening to me. What I say, say is narrated by, by narrated by, by, so by and so. By yes. problem. So he nar he is dictated and they yes. wrote yes. whatever he exactly was putting it together. Yeah. So what the Quran came before? Was it before? Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A long well, time before. Hey, no, the, the Quran. But he, the Quran, he got revelation when he was forty. Right. And so, so, 40. so, so let me try and put it together now. So. When he was, uh, I'm not that you are, by the way. Yeah, no, I don't know. What's your name again? Muhammad, 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 Constantine. Constantine. Um, because I'm trying to um, yeah. piece it together. So the the, the Quran was who, who wrote that? Who dictated right. that? So the Quran came straight from God through Angel Gabriel. So did the angel hand the book down or no? It was you know, no, what didn't come. Somebody came right. as revelation. Oh, oh, so it came as revelation. Revelation. So the first one to the Prophet Muhammad. Oh, oh to him, same one. Because when, when, when he came the first time, he was in the cave of Hira. Because the, he was a very, very nice man. Yeah, yeah. Because there were so many things going which he didn't like. Yeah. So he would take his food and yeah. go and stay in the cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For peace and tranquility. Yeah, yeah. Try to same find, to try to like find, try to find God. Yeah. This, what do you find? This yeah. So many stabbing in Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you see, dogs. Eating people up, so yeah. many people and then with that, what's it called? The bully excel, American bully excel. Yeah. See, things like that, he wanted to, read, to, 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 to keep away from all these things. And it was then that the angels, yes, when, he was, when he was in the cave. He was in the cave, meditating, and, uh, and angel Gabriel came to him. And that would be half the book of the Quran? No, 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 that was the whole of it. No, 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 only verse by verse. He, angel Gabriel will make him memorize it. Then he will go. And tell somebody that can write. And then he dictated and whatever, the whatever they had, because the Quran is not on paper, just like Allah Mawala, it's on a piece of paper, piece of letter, piece of stone, it's in the back of my phone. And then all of that was. That so was that he, he, on he, he, he remember he wrote down when he went back home. Yeah, no, he didn't write it down. He got, he got somebody to write yeah, so, yeah. so he could stay down there. Yeah, yeah, he could not write. And then all those pieces now. There's all these pieces. There's, there's after, after, but, and all that was put together after he died. After, yes. Yes. And that became known as the Quran. Yes. You know that the Quran, the, the first verse that was written, it's not the first in the Quran. It's under the law. So it's not in order of revelation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because, yeah, because yeah, like, yeah. like a chapter didn't come in one book. Yes, yes. That part of the oh, oh, yeah, that's why I became. So he was in the, in the place of worship or the cave. He was at the of the cave. And then the animal came to the location. Because we are believers. We've never seen what we believe as God. We believe just from our lives. We believe this. Yeah. Yeah. We have always found it. We have always found it. We have always found it. So he went to Mosulosa. And there it is said that in that prayer, the prayer was a hundred and twenty thousand. So he was only like the Imam the final of the dome of God. Oh, that's why I was in the house. Okay, so that's when you send it. So then the day that when he passed away, this is very much it. Then he came back. Okay, so he wants you 
He says, he says in the Quran, he says in the Quran, I have not burdened with anything that you can't bear. Yeah, yeah. So whatever he's given us to do, he's asked us to do, he's bearable, he's doable. Okay, who's first? He's the main imam, so okay. if he, whatever I'm saying, because like he's, he's a scholar, he will have all the answers. So These are you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I said this is a place of worship. It's for all. It's, good. it's for all. It's not only for Muslim. Do you pray? Have you written inside? It's simple, isn't it? It's, good. it's very encouraging. Have you written inside? Yeah. Very encouraging indeed. Um, yes. What are you your name? I can't very take it back now. You want your name? Please, the media. Nice to meet you. You want your name? You wrote it already. You wrote page. Pages. I can't send it to somebody else now, so you keep this for next year, and you bring 20 more cards and I give you new books. All right. Because if you're writing the book, then I can't take it back, isn't it? I bring 20 more cards tomorrow, and I'll give you a new set. So I figure. If you got, um, I see you a little bit busy, but if you got 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you can spare when you finish. Well, you can ask me now. Whatever you want to ask me, you can ask me now. Oh, okay, all right, no, I'm going to ask. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can help you, I can help you. We have our books back. Which book do you want? <laughs> Send it twice now. <laughs> but, these, but these books, uh, are they for the kids? Those? Yeah, for the kids, my family, the mother of the books. Oh, interesting, interesting, man. I, I like the, the organization and the communal spirit. Beautiful stuff. I, I really enjoy it. Thank you. Islam as a religion it brings a lot to every community. Every community brings a lot. You know, I I was brought up a seven day church of God. Seven day church of God. Seven day church of God. Church of God. Church of God. Protestant kind. Christian kind of thing. It's a more safe thing from America. This is how we use it. 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 This is how we Purity, yeah, it shows the kind of that, uh, what do you say? Uh, it's what you call a puritanic kind of belief system. I like that. Uh, it's not the adult mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who does the Quran It's the same biblical story. He was a pious one. He had pride weapons. He was a pious one. He was a pious one. He was a pious one. He was was it the Adam thing? Adam. And then he was banished. So he was a pious one. He was a pious one. He was a pious one. Oh, so Adam was the creation of her, right? Yeah, Adam and Eve. Oh, so... ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがと
there is some living back in the world. Nowadays, scientists have done studies. Leave small kids on an island. And that they done studies and they prove that these small kids, after no manipulation, they all believe in God. They all believe that they all believe in God. For example, they will say you have to hear the word from someone else, or you have to hear the word from or the original word. You can see where I'm going. So because of the organization, as you all would like to do, it's a personal thing to you and God. Yeah. 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 And then he goes a bit further and he says, God said. And then he goes a bit further and he goes, Oh, you know it. What do you know? No, no, really. I was born as I had my own way to us. And then follow my father. I had been talking all the time. And then I was missing the tools. And then he was talking to him. And then he was talking to Don't worry, come on. I can't see it inside. Welcome back everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about the six most important things that we need to know. So what are these six most important things? We're going to list them one by one and we're going to discuss them today. So let's start with the first one. So first and foremost, we help you to grow spiritually stronger. How do we do that? By following the Eye Awareness Guide. What is the Eye Awareness Guide? We'll talk more about that coming up. We also talk about prayer and why all prayers are the most effective prayers because we pray in a particular way that gives a particular meaning to what we do and what we say. This is very, very important for your spiritual health and to find favor in the eyes of God. Second, we talk about law, which is very important to know. If you don't know what the laws are, you can't obey them. And if you don't know what the laws are, you can't know what God is. How are they related? We will talk more about that. Third, we discuss Philosophy. Can philosophy be a part of religion? Is philosophy important? Yes, it is. And we will talk more about why it's important and why we don't do it yet. Caught you there. Fourth, we talk about theology. Mm. Is theology important to forming that strong spiritual umbilical connection to your creator? Yes and no. It depends. But we'll, we'll discuss the pros and cons, although we teach it. We don't practice it here. And fifth, science. What does science have to do with God and your spiritual health? We will also discuss that, the importance of science, the do's and don'ts, the pros and cons, and why we teach it here. That's coming up. Sixth and the most important of all, what is spirituality? Why is it important to form a strong spiritual connection to your creator? And what is the most effective way to do it? And why it's important to follow the eye awareness guide in doing it? Those six things we're going to discuss in this episode. But before I discuss these topics, why not click on the link in the description below. There it will bring you to a page where you see all our other subscriptions and programs we're running, live streaming event, podcasts, and other programs. So there you can learn a lot more about our channel, what we're about, and why we do the things we do. You can also show your love and support for what we're doing by purchasing one of those packages, support the channel, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel also, and, and tick that old notification bell. You'll be notified whenever we upload no podcasts, no live stream events, no videos. We also have other programs where we're giving back and we're growing these programs week by week and we hope to give back directly to people in the community. So why not join us in this program by clicking on that link below to join and become a member of our community where we have fantastic events every month. There are different, different events that you can be an active part of and that you can join and become a member. So why not click on that subscription below. Thank you one and all for your support. Thank you. We appreciate it very much. I'll see you in the next program.
Hi everyone, now today I'm going to show you how to navigate our channel quick and easy. Type the channel name PGTL101, enter, and or you will see a list of our videos down here. Why not go ahead and click on the logo or the channel and you will see a bunch of our videos here. So you'll see all our latest videos here and all the programs we do. These are some new videos that have just been uploaded here. You can see all our shorts down here, less than a minute clip down here. And you can see all the videos we have in this section here. So why not go ahead while you're on our channel there and check out our, our talk on exorcism and our all-in-one videos. There's six videos in this section. And while you're there, why not tick that notification bell? Also, if you want to leave us a comment and or drop us an email. And now up here, you will find our shorts. Here you will find all our podcasts. If you're on YouTube or other social media sites and uh, go directly to our channel, why not go down here and click on the logo just below all the comments that uh, are made on our channel there. You can also learn more about the other programs we do, like our Patreon page, our Spotify podcast, and Buzzsprout. You can click on our logo or channel name. One other thing I'd like to show you real quick is how to get the program in your own language. All you have to do is to click on or to hear the program in your own language. Click on the subtitle here. You can see it is is already in uh, English subtitle to get the program in your subtitles simply click on the on our settings button here and here you will see that the program is already in English uh, go ahead and click on the subtitle button there and or you can translate the program in your own language by clicking on auto so by clicking on auto translate just select your country and you can listen to the program in your own language click on subtitle there and as you can see it will translate English subtitle so if I go ahead and play the program now you'll see it in the English subtitle there so on our website you'll get the full version videos so why not go ahead and check out our website or our podcast scrolling down by checking out our other packages which you can find in this section down here and you can click on our Patreon page here or our Spotify page Buzzsprout too the other program programs that we're running so that is how you navigate our channel so why not go ahead and click on our, our logo here and or the channel name and this will take you directly to our youtube channel